Audiobook title. Altered Worlds, 00-14, Female Voice by Thandler. This work belongs to author, Thandler. Prologue. Hearing a light chime at my cabin's door, I spoke out low denter please. Admiral Hawthorne, ma'am I have the latest translation reports from the artifact the sharply dressed lieutenant commander announced. Good. Come on in and take a seat. You can also do away with the rigid formality. It's just you and I would you like anything to drink? I asked Jasmine. With a small sigh Jasmine approached my desk taking a seat and lettering herself relax just a little. No thank you. Mom. Jasmine said with a small smile. How are your siblings doing? I barely have any time to just chat anymore. I asked my daughter. The dozen or so that I get any updates from are doing well. The three or four others that forget to say anything for months at a time seem to be okay. When they finally communicate back to more responsible individuals, she said with just a hint of exacerbation. I gave a small chuckle at that knowing I was one of the worst offenders from when I was young. We continued to small talk for just a few minutes more at both of us relaxed in family ties that have been all but absent for the past five years. So dear, about that report. As I grudgingly moved back to more professional topics, yes the report. This should be one of the earliest records recovered from the artifact. The team and I have already gone over it as well as other disjointed records so we think we have the translations in the correct order. Again and like always this artifact is so alien to humanity, well it could just be trying to order breakfast from a drive through or something. She stated while glaring at the report. That bad? I asked. Worse. Far worse she stated. Being handed a large and heavy envelope, I immediately saw the security marking and sighed. Did you really need to encode it at that level? The entire station is already already rated for maximum security, I asked, knowing full well what was coming next. Mom, the security classification requirements was under your orders. I'm just following my orders for transfer of highly sensitive material Jasmine stated with what I think was just the smallest hint of amusement. I really need to rescind those orders. That base we used to operate out of no longer exists, anyway. Now if I could only figure out what forms are required, I said lost in thought. During this time I opened my desk drawer and located several injectors. Pulled one out and and pressed it firmly to my leg, feeling the fluid ever so slowly enter my leg. You know it's quicker if you press it to your carotid artery. My daughter stated. You know I hate needles and the thought of pressing it to my neck makes me want to throw up, I said with a small bit resentment. Several minutes after the injection I could sense the biologically encoded nanites filter into my eyes and toward my optic nerve. I even had to suppress my own medical nanites from reacting to the intrusion. Reaching over to the sealed folder that read top secret, thinking to myself for the millionth time the military still loves its classification system even after all these years. Report, report underscore AFT 12 underscore TA001, first coherent translation of communication from artifact AFT 12. Ref reports, AFT 12, AFT 12 underscore DA, AFT, collection location, collection time, site commander, lead researcher, Hawthorne. Jasmine Lieutenant Commander, ST 00008 Primary Research Staff, Night Rye, Solomon PhD Language PhD Philosophy, Evans, Nymoff has PhD Psychology PhD Neuroscience PhD, Ray, Philemon PDH Biology PhD Xenobiology, Vasily Oscars, Brexo PhD Applied Physics PhD Mathematics PhD Theoretical Physics Translation begins. Countdown slash end slash cycle slash obras slash storm. Event in. 1.65 times 1016 T. 1. Deploy slash set slash brace slash activate. 0 slash null slash l slash non event. Shield slash barrier slash wall slash boundary slash raft. Countdown slash end slash cycle slash obras slash storm. Event in. 8.7 times 1015 T. 1. Health status slash fuel slash muscles slash self. Ready slash l slash satisfied. Countdown slash end slash cycle slash obras slash storm. Event in. 4.2 times 1015 T. 
1 deploy slash set slash brace slash activate 0 slash null slash l slash non event shield slash barrier slash wall slash boundary slash raft countdown slash end slash cycle slash obras slash storm event in 1.0045 times 1015 t 1 deploying slash setting slash bracing slash activating 0 slash null slash l slash non event shield slash barrier slash wall slash boundary slash raft countdown slash end slash cycle slash obras slash storm event in omega plus 2.8 times 1015 t unzipped slash eat slash packed slash deactivated 0 slash null slash l slash non event shield slash barrier slash wall slash boundary slash raft translation ends addendum AFT12 likely keep track of time via the frequency of a hydrogen atom as described by 1T equals 8. 25 times 1014 S minus 1. End report. It took three years to translate five lines of text. I asked in astonishment. My daughter gave a quiet snort of amusement. You know full well it's more like trying to crack a code or a cipher than a language. We had not point of commonality until we discovered the memories buried outside of space-time. Slowly tears filled my daughter's eyes as she relieved past lives, just thinking about the mind. After a deep breath, I got up from my chair and pulled my daughter into my embrace. This is your mother speaking. You have done amazing work and sacrifice so much. You continue to push, guild and fight a very stubborn humanity through these amazing and insane time. I am proud to call you my daughter, and I love you very much, I said with as much affection and I could put behind what was inadequate words. Jasmine was quietly weeping into my shoulder. Eventually she said I don't know you've handled it so well. I feel crazy being so different from the rest of humanity. It hurts. It hurts to live past my friends, my spouses my children. Then to also have to interact with that mind. To feel the memories of our loved ones in there. How do you keep going mum? It's hard so very very hard but I'm glad I still have you. It's not easy. But I do this for my child and their children and so on. Humanity had become our children. It's the sacrifice I bear to protect and nurture them. I said with tears in my eyes. Even after discovering how to access those memories six months ago, the burden was so very heavy. I of course felt the same loss and longing she felt but I had to stay strong even if just for my daughter's sake. 4. Chapter 1 A morning almost like any other. I was suddenly awakened by the tormented screaming of the universe tearing open, only to realize it was my phone's alarm clock. Groggily I ripped off my mask and checked my phone's clock. 10.30 am in its all too bright illumination, tossing my phone back down I lay in bed with a nasty headache, a full bladder, and a sense of dread on how I was going to piss. Gingerly getting up from my bed I try not to aggravate my already painful nether regions as I waddle my way over to the bathroom. Fuck me. I'm waiting till the pain meds kick in. I grumble to myself reaching for the prescription pain pill bottle. Looking at the pill bottle I only had four days left, and with a sense of apprehension I swallow the dose. I hate being on this stuff. I don't see how people enjoy feeling that fluffy spacey feeling, but fuck me. Pissing hurts too much right now. I grumbled to myself as I collected more pills. Looking at them I see the normal collection, estradiol progesterone, spironolactone, and others I can't remember the name of without looking at the bottles. I spent the next 15 minutes standing in my bathroom browsing my phone in annoyance as I wanted to pee so badly. One thing that did help a little was looking at myself in the mirror and seeing Evelyn instead of Henry. There was not much of a difference between the two but the latest set of changes pushed that gap further apart. This though was quickly interrupted by the urge to take a piss. Fuck it and waddled over to my toilet. After a wonderful time getting my bladder to relax, cleaning myself up. In the middle of this I continue to hear a loud thump at my bedroom door and a loud annoyed me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hold on, mommy's almost done. I said, followed by another thump at the door seconds later. Changing out of pajamas and into not pajamas I finally head over to the door and brace myself for the inevitable parade of cat. Opening the door I am greeted by black, white, and orange streaks as all my cats run into the room. Like I keep saying, 
I love you all and want to cuddle and play but I'm still recovering, saying as I carefully bend over to pet the closest catty. Feeling my stomach rumble, I start the slow walk downstairs to my kitchen for breakfast. Even with all the meds, the recent surgery, and my life going quite well I could not shake this feeling of tension or anxiety slowly building in my gut. It reminded me of the early days when trying to treat my small mountain of issues experimenting with different medicine combinations, it felt like I could press back against it with my will only for it to lapse back into place. Who knows maybe my body was trying to tell me something. Later that day, pacing back and forth, sit down, standing up I could feel that knot of anxiety still in my gut, it just would not go away. What's odd was I started noticing several of my neighbors also affected by some form of anxiety. Most often this was expressed in the form of arguments and shouting. Luckily it never seemed to escalate but you could feel it in the air, almost a buzzing sensation not too dissimilar from being close to power lines or a transformer but not audible. After noticing my neighbors were outside I decided to venture outside and chat. This was a very big feat at the time with the combination of my normal anxiety, the anxiety from my recent operation, and whatever what going around to put everyone on edge. I wanted to throw up but I was also smart enough that something and felt the need to investigate. Walking out my front door a wave to Alex and David, a married couple living in the townhouse next to mine. Afternoon Evelyn said Alex in a non-edge but still open sort of mood. Afternoon. I greeted back as cheerfully as I could muster. You and David, feel something too? I asked. David and Alex looked at each other and a silent agreement took place. David spoke up yeah you too? Have you heard anything? Yep, and no nothing, but noticing you too, as well as our other neighbors, and the internet in a meltdown well, I said hesitantly. Alex and David looked at each other again, with a similar worried look. Alex I'm concerned it's COVID 2.0 or something. I can't handle being cooped up again like last time, Alex said with apprehension. No, I don't think it's viral, bacterial, or anything of the sort. We would have heard about rumors of nothing else as it spread initially, I said thoughtfully. No this seems to have it everyone at roughly the same time, I said as I looked around the neighborhood. So any theories? I have not seen much on the internet myself. David asked. As to what's causing the general feeling of anxiety I have no idea. I do think however that it's not unlike some pets or animals seem to get worried when an earthquake is about to occur, or a major store is approaching. They feel something is off and want to get away, I said with more confidence than I felt. That actually makes a sort of sense in that context, David said. Also are you okay? You seem a little well green and you are talking kind of stiffly, David said questioningly. Oh um, I'm fine. I am um, just had surgery less than two weeks ago and I'm still recovering, I said with some apprehension. Oh wow, are you doing okay? Do you need anything? We hardly seen anyone else but you come and go from your place, Alex asked kindly. Oh um thanks, I'm good um this was a planned operation so I made sure to prepare. I said with a blossom of worry eating at my stomach. I really really didn't want to talk to my neighbor's gender confirmation surgery, GCS. They seemed nice but I didn't know them very well even after living next to them for two years. Okay, well just let us know and we will see what we can do to help, Alex said kindly. Thanks I said with a bit of a blush. It was during the last part of the conversation I felt my phone begin to vibrate, followed by Alex's ringing and David's chirping. Noticing that all at once I felt the floor of my stomach give out, that was likely a notification from the CDC or something to start quarantining. Announcement. Emergency alert. Public health emergency. Announcement. Pred. Joe Biden has issued a stay-home order, effective immediately. No resident should leave their home unless it is for an essential reason. Grocery stores and essential services will remain open, operating under limited availability after 8 p.m. Hospitals are to continue to remain open at all times. More, https colon slash slash emergency dot cdc dot gov slash han slash fuck. I quietly breathed out and looked at my neighbors. Oh come on not another covid. I can't do it again said Alex in exasperation. 
I looked at her husband and gave a small grimace. Again, I don't think it's any sort of disease. Incubation does not work like that. We should see pockets of people with anxiety and whatever else might come up. Right now it seems everyone is just waking up feeling anxious. This seems to be a precaution in case of any changes. I said with more confidence than I felt. Heading back inside I picked up an orange cat and gave him a big smooch on the head. I felt his rough tongue lick the underside of my jaw before I felt a careful bite. I love you too Tuck. Now please stop biting me. I said affectionately. Doing the same with the two moo cats Karma and Catty I gave them my love. What I didn't say out loud but was thinking, some sort of disease would be a lot easier to explain why everyone seems to be feeling like the world is going to end. Well let's see if Tim has heard anything. Heading upstairs to my office, let's see what Tim is up to. Discord says away, moving over to Signal I send the following. Hey, have you been feeling anxious all day? Well besides the normal anxiety I guess. Any news on your end, I am starting to send out messages to see if anyone has heard more details. Also are you working remotely today or at the office? I typed out several tense minutes later. Fuck. Tim's message, more time passes. Great more single word messages from him, was in a meeting with Mike and the rest of the team. They have all been feeling it as well, was at the office due to reasons. We'll call when driving home. Tim's message, right, well that answers that question. Let's set up a few more texts to see if anyone in my network has heard anything more. I giggled to myself as I started typing out a message that I would be copy pasting to everyone I knew that was associated with a government job. Are you feeling anxiety as well? Also I don't think this is from a new disease like Covid or anything. We would see symptoms pop up at different locations and at different rate. If I hear anything I will let you know. Prepping the text message to my mom's husband first, send then copy message. Now let's see who to message. Liz yes, Jim yes, Jason yes, Larry maybe, other Jim yes, Brian yes, Stephen no. The list went on. After sending this out I thought to myself about all the people I have met working as a government contractor. It was interesting particularly because I actually knew some people to contact for just about anything. Another part of me felt both thrilled and guilty regarding what I was doing. Then again everyone has done that at some point. My phone starts to vibrate, looking at the screen I see Tim calling me via signal. Let's see what my identical brother has to say on the situation. 4. Chapter 2, Planning with Tim. Answering Tim's call. Hey I said. Hey, can you hear me? Tim said. Nope. I said. K, so any updates on your side hen? Tim asked. Thinking to myself Hugh. I have been transitioning for four fucking years and he still is not comfortable with this. Nope. Been remote, still remote. You? I said with just a bit of exasperation. Nope. Tim said. Messaged my network but nothing yet. Was kind of hoping Mike off from the office might have heard something before the alert was made. I said. Nope. Tim said. After a moment of pause. Plan? Tim asked. Him at my place. What's traffic like for you right now? How's 267 and 28? I asked. Traffic's better than expected but lots of people working from home still. Tim said. You grab some stuff and come to my place? I asked. I don't know. Maybe let me see what happens over the next few hours. Tim said. Look I'm actually kind of worried this time. Covid was a clusterfuck but at least we understood what was happening. I said with a bit of emphasis. Fuck. I'll think about it. Why? Don't you have more firearms than I do? Tim asked annoyed. It's not about being armed, but something does feel up. I said. Well I'm driving. I'll message you when I get home. Tim said with a mild level of aggression. K. Okay. Just be safe, I said. Later Tim said, then hung up. Right well what to do now? As I sat in my office chair looking at my computer screen, think to myself that I needed a way to decompress I launched Warframe. Maybe five minutes later I closed Warframe. Fuck that too much mental effort right now. Thinking to myself, what about Reddit? A tiny part of my mind said I had to fight that thought. After the resent blackout regarding the API changes I had managed to just scrolling through the front page to see if any major event took place. 
I was doing a good job of managing that addiction as well. Okay let's see what's on the front page at least, thinking to myself. After several minutes of skimming there was nothing new or anything that I did not expect to see. The same article posted and reposted five different times or some stupid meme. After a few more minutes of aimlessly staring at my monitor I decided to play with the cats. After an hour and a few texts back and forth with my mom and others that amounted to nothing more than love you and or stay safe I got a call from Tim. Fuck it. I'm coming over. Anything you need me to bring? Tim said. No I'm set here due to the surgery prep. Just your pistols and some ammo and I guess your steam deck? I asked. K. Okay, well leaving soon he said. K. Okay, I said, and hung up. Once my brother got over and we got situated. I worked on dinner for the two of us while he worked on my second day R15. While he was trying to act normal he was definitely on edge. We ate then tried to play some games but just could not find anything. We were both too anxious from everything that was going on. I think I'm going to put the 7 inch barrel on my first AR-15, I said with some apprehension. K, okay, your funeral if you get caught, he said. I'm hoping we don't need to leave the house with this at all, but none of my weapons have been sighted properly so. I don't know, I said. I was decently worried, with my normal anxiety boosted to 11 and everything else adding into that. I knew nothing was going to happen but even the idea of arming myself for well self-defense scared me. The tiny glimmer of good news I got out of all this is that I was so distracted by what was going on that I didn't notice the mild pain in my groin, at least until I needed to take a piss. The next morning we both get up and I begin to make breakfast. The pressure seems worse today, I said tiredly. Yeah, same. Tim said. Ideas? I asked. Nope, he said. Fuck. I really doubt it's a disease. Diseases just don't affect an entire population at the same time. Well not unless it was tailored to do so but even then I can't come up with a method that would rely on biological timing. As I rambled on. You're overthinking this, he said tiredly. Yeah well I know you are as well. I retorted. Fuck. I really wish we didn't think so similarly, he said in defeat. Okay then, so what subliminal signal or something subconscious? I asked in reply. Yeah, that would make the most sense assuming it's affecting the entire world, he stated. Well good thing half the EU has also gone into quarantine. Safe bet that other countries are just staying silent to the rest of the world. I said as I was reviewing the latest news. I continued to monitor the different news reports regarding latest counties that have closed borders and restricted travel. Several more minutes of silence took place as we both skimmed different news sources. Well US. And DU has now grounded all flights for the time being. Tim said, oh boo hoo to the airlines. That should have come at the same time as the health alert closed down all the non-essentials. I said, this kind of conversation kicked back and forth for the better part of two hours before we finally found something. Hey sending you a link to Reddit, asking everyone to post when they started to notice the aimless anxiety. Think we should post? I asked. Looks like our time zone and even area was already posted. Take a look at the oldest posts, he said. Um yeah, based on current posts that puts it at around 10 o'clock UTC. I said. Several more hours pass, we try to play some video games, and we continue to play with the cats as we wait. Hey are you feeling a little funny? I asked him. Okay yeah. I was about to ask you the same thing. What does it feel like? For me some dizziness a bit of lightheadedness, and I think I am seeing an aura. Tim said, yep same for me, feels a bit like the start of a migraine but I never had the aura before, how about you, I asked, same, no aura, do you have a migraine meds, he asked, yeah it's in the drawer on the right side of the oven, bring the bottle over as well, I said, over the next several minutes we both took a double dose of caffeinated acetaminophen, and waited for the pain to start, oh fuck, Tim said, in a rather scared statement, what, I asked, looking at him from under the pillow I was using the shield my eyes, others are reporting migraines as well, twitter is starting to blow up, he said as he continued to scroll through his phone, oh fuck, I said in agreement, the dizziness continued to get worse, 
We both laid down on my main floor's hardwood floor as for some reason our inner ears told our brains that up was down and right was currently 90 degrees from reality. At one point our cats starting hissing at each other, and I think whatever was affecting us was also affecting them. This process continued on for how long I have no idea. I threw up at least twice and might have blacked out or passed out at some point. At one point my entire body became itchy I think, or it could have been my imagination I really could not tell. Eventually I fell asleep. 3 Chapter 3 Changes Oh fuck me I feel like shit I stated as I got up the next morning. It looked to be around 6 a.m. based on the sun and what my phone stated. Same, Tim stated from the other side of the room. You want to take one of my prescribed pain pills? I'm almost done the prescription anyway. I asked as I drank several glasses of nice cold water. No. Long pause, yes, he said. I gave him a dry chuckle and said, you know they will never find out, and besides they don't care about one or two pill from an old prescription. Yeah, I know I just don't like doing it still, he stated. Same. I responded in kind. Giving the pain meds several minutes to do their job I eventually started checking the news and other sources. Oh that's fucking crazy. I'm seeing on Twitter that some people are just starting to come out of whatever that was, I said as I started scanning different tweets. Nothing on other news sources yet? Tim asked. Checking still give me a few minutes. I said. Nope there was nothing out there yet. As I skimmed different news sites. I even ventured to Fox News to see if they posted anything, and nothing. Nope. Nothing. I think people are just starting to come back to consciousness now. Ouch that's going to fuck with everyone's sleep schedules I bet. I said with a bit of worry. Hey do you feel that anxiety still? Tim asked, thinking about it. No I didn't. I could still feel my normal general anxiety but I could trace to points as to why I felt like that. That mystery anxiety was just that. It reminded me of just mild wrongness somehow. Nope it's gone for me as well. In fact I'm starting to feel a hell of a lot better. You? I asked. Yeah feeling way better as well. But fuck I am hungry. Tim stated. Same. Scrambled eggs and toast? I asked. Grunting in his affirmative I started making breakfast. Now my brother and I could eat a lot. We were not small individuals and took comfort in food. But even after going though three eggs apiece and several slices of toast we were still starving. In silent agreement we make more, then more again. Okay, what the fuck was that I think we each ate like twelve eggs and half a loaf of bread each. I stated. I have no idea. But even now I am not well. Stuffed. Tim said. Also I am starting to feel kind of hot right now. He continued, okay I was thinking it was just from all the cooking but yeah, I keep the house at 68, I stated, checking the thermostat in case we adjusted when he both passed out, it still read 68, even feeling the vents the air felt cool, my AC was working, well we ate a shit ton of food so maybe that had something to do with it, Tim said, we continued that morning watching our phones when the first reports of changed individuals started to pop up about an hour past waking up. Okay what's going on? Are you seeing posts and news reports that some people have been changed in some way? I asked. Yeah, so far it's very inconsistent and while several videos have popped up on Twitter, well only one person know how to actually use their phone's camera. But they didn't capture anything good, he said. Several more minutes passed as we continued. What the fuck? I shouted out loud. I'm sending you the link now. What? That doesn't make any sense, he stated. I know but they look like real wings. I mean this could be CGI and or AI. It could also be very good prosthetics for like visual effects. But for a few likes and in what less than two hours? I said. Shit. I think you're right. Someone else is reporting that they have telepathy and can read other people's minds. He said. What the fuck happened to the world? I asked. It was not confirmed by the US government until several days passed that some portion of the population had been altered in some fashion. News reports had been reported all sorts of crazy stuff. Telepathy, flight, transformations, teleporting. It was a collection of every single superpower ever described in any sort of media. There had been deaths too, 
people died because they had been traveling when they passed out and crashed. Luckily many counties has grounded commercial flights otherwise I suspect it would have been far more terrible, and any crazy thing you could think of was happening all over the world. Robberies, murders, coups, vigilantism, the list and people involved continued to grow by the hour. The president of the Russian Federation was killed when an altered Spetsnaz apparently teleported into the office and drove a long dagger into the back of the leader. Several other attempts had taken places around the world. China was in utter chaos as a portion of their assembly was associated by some sort of smoke being. Attempts to kill political figures continued to grow by the day. The US was reporting that attempts on a number of notable political individuals had been thwarted already. However reports were vague on the details. My brother and I also discovered that we had both been altered in some way. It was not immediately obvious but we both seemed to feel better and have more energy. Tim initially sliced his finger to the point where we had been guessing if he needed stitches but decided to wait till the morning to see how bad it was. By the next morning the cut had looked a week old. Okay, what the fuck, he said as he showed me his finger. Um. That looked like it originally needed stitches right? I asked. Yep, also it made me realize something which I am going to ask you about, he stated. Okay, I replied back, how do you feel when you wake up in the morning? Any muscle pain or anything? He asked with a bit of a grin on his face. After a moment I finally processed what he was asking me. No, no I had not had any pain, from muscles or sleeping funny, or even my recent surgery. I had completely forgotten about how I had been feeling like shit every time I woke up. Um. No, I have been feeling great in the morning, until you pointed it out I didn't think anything of it, I said with a bit of a shock. Yeah same, the cut was the only thing that made me realize something was even up. Some of my old scars have faded quite a bit as well he stated with a grin. Wait what? As I looked down at my arm only to realize that the colloid scar on my arm had faded significantly. I could still feel a bit of a bump on the spot but it was almost gone. I immediately ran to my bedroom then into my bathroom and closed my door. Using a small mirror I normally use for shaving I took a look at my recent surgical operation. It was almost completely healed. There were spots that were still irritated but overall it looked fine. Also thinking about it over the past several days dilatation became much easier for me to handle. It didn't feel great but it looked me less effort now. Putting comfy pants back on got on the scale. Um hey Tim, can you come in here? I asked. What the fuck? No I don't want to see any of that, he stated from what sounded like the hallway leading into my bedroom. What? Oh no I'm properly clothed again. But I want you to take a look at the scale and tell me what you see. I said, you open the door then. He said, huffing out in exasperation I opened my bathroom door and waved him in. Okay what does the number read to you? I asked. Looks like about 201 pounds. Yep okay. Why? He asked. I was 250 a week ago, just before the anxiety and other changes started. I stated. His eyes shot wide open and then jumped on the scale himself. Holy fucking shit. I'm down like 50 pounds as well. He shouted. After a moment of contemplation, how the fuck did we manage to lose 50 pounds and neither of us realized. Also why did we lose 50 pounds? I asked. No idea how we missed the weight loss other than that we have been focused on the news and stuff I guess. Tim stated. Okay, so old scars are healing new injuries are healing at an accelerated rate, and we are both losing massive amounts of weight, I'm not going to argue with these results unless something more happens, I stated as I looked at my brother, oh shit, Tim shouted, is that why we have been eating so much, is it to offset what our bodies are burning, I looked at him like a cow looking at an oncoming train, that might explain why we are both so damn warm as of late, our bodies are processing as an accelerated rate. I said with a bit of glee. Heading back downstairs and to a couch we continued to talk about what was going on. Okay so I can buy that our bodies are just processing faster, which would explain most of what we have seen. However that would not explain old scars disappearing. I said, fuck you're right, and neither of us know enough about biology to really know if any of our theories are going in the right direction. He said as he continued to think. Okay well I'm going to run a few minor experiments in the garage. I told him. Okay. 
Wait what are you planning on doing? Don't fucking cut yourself up or something like that, he told me. No, I'm just going to see if I can lift more and ride my stationary bike longer, I stated. I was by no means a health nut or anything. I had a few pieces of workout equipment I collected during COVID. Like any good coat track the stationary bike was covered in cold weather gear that I never put away. The weights I had just ordered already had a fine layer of dust on them as well. Yay depression and hating exercise. Grabbing the weights I picked one up expecting to struggle a little bit. I had each weight set to 70 pounds because I had been moving them around. Picking one up I was in shock with how light it felt. I could feel the mass and inertia but it felt 50 pounds lighter than it should. I grabbed the other weight and again the same thing. Just for fun I tried to do a lateral rise with 70 pounds in each hand, and while it took effort it would not that bad. I continued to do a full set of 10 and while I could feel the burn of my muscles it didn't feel like I was doing all that much work. Oh fuck Tim needs to see this. I said to myself, calling up Tim you need to check this out it's crazy. Moments later he was doing the same thing as me and we are both struck dumb. Neither of us had ever been able to do something like that before. Tim in particular because of an injury in his shoulder from a few years back from an adventuring accident. You also don't feel winded like you normally would do you? I asked, after he had completed several sets. Nope. The effort it takes feels like I have been lifting for months maybe years. He said, okay, um can you try the bike next? I was thinking about doing it but remember about my resent surgery. Come to think of it I should not have fucked with the weights either. I stated in a bit of a panic. Yeah, I can do that your bike was set up to measure what output correct? He asked. Yep. It'll pull up the reader on my phone. Just push as hard as you can comfortably. I told him. He jumped on the bike and started pedaling. After a moment of adjustment he started pushing himself. 110 watts slash hour. 120, 160, 240 watts slash hour. He got to about 350 watts hour before he signaled that he really could not get it higher without using proper clear pins. From that point I timed him, and figured he would stop after about 5 minutes. At the 5 minute point he asked me to get a water bottle for him so I did. After 4 more water bottles and an hour on the bike he finally stopped, drenched in sweat. Okay, I was not expecting anything like that level of endurance, I stated. Same, we need to come up with some tests and figure out what our limits currently are and see if they continue to improve over time, he said. So we spend the next few hours researching different tests we could put together with the equipment we had access to. 4. Chapter 4, Progress. By this point about four weeks have passed since the event now being called by some as the alteration had taken place. Tim and myself had been busy in our ADHD fueled obsessed ways. We had not only come up with different tests for ourselves but for one of my brother's co-workers who turned out to be altered as well. We also discovered that additional changes had occurred for my brother and I. We had real honest superpowers, it was amazing. We were also nervous about what people might do if they discovered our or others' abilities. Most of our initial tests involved testing lifting capacity of different muscle groups, as well as endurance of said muscle groups. This was easily done by well just lifting weights in different set and group configuration. We figured at least based on projections with our terrible back of a napkin math that we were almost as strong as a person could be in peak physical condition in their early 20s. It was hard to say as we didn't have proper gym equipment to test with. For some reason Tim's strength was surpassing my own by maybe 20% to 40% depending on the muscle group. However it turns out I was way more flexible than Tim was. I was by no means a contortionist but I had a very wide range of movement now. We did get creative with a reflex test using an Arduino some infrared sensors and some LEDs. Setting up the infrared sensors to act as a start gate and stop gate. We could measure how long it took to break each infrared sensors beam. Secondly we also attached an LED that would light up after a random interval of time and measure how long it would take to break the first beam. We calculated our reaction time down to about 150 ms. This means that if you see an object falling over it would take about 150 ms for your hand to react to catch it. 
the average person sits at around 250 ms for a reaction time. We also suspected we could bring these numbers down a little more if using muscle memory, the enhanced metabolism, as well as the other changes had really started to make an impact on our appearances. We both looked about six years younger after only four weeks but it was hard for us to tell. We lost tons of fat which we assumed was used as part of the fuel for our continuing changes. Oddly to our allergies greatly reduced in severity during this time, which was great as we had a laundry list of irritants, include mild allergies to my cats. Our smell got better, but we think was more due to allergies. We also felt far less lethargic as the day went on. Our endurance was insane with both of us being able to do simulated 100-mile bike rides in under 5 hours 45 minutes. The odd part I discovered was my own personal changes as this time had passed. During one of our lift testing sessions I unexpectedly dislocated three ribs. Luckily in my case the popped back into place after I stopped but fuck it hurt. As it turned out for some reason my rib cage had softened quite a bit until it felt more like cartilage. That worried me as well my rib cage is supposed to protect all the needed organs in my torso. Unfortunately most hospitals were still overcrowded due to the altered individuals panicking, or injuries sustained while working with altered. It was COVID 2020 all over again. This did give us a rough benchmark of how fast we could heal on our own or at least I anyway which was about 800% faster than the average person. Within three days I no longer felt any lingering pain from that injury. However I suspected what was additionally going on with my body had an impact. Going back to Tim's co-worker Samantha, this was the first time we had a chance to learn about another altered. Unlike myself and my brother, Samantha's ability was much harder to explain, and my much harder I mean impossible. Two different abilities she manifested were first to project barriers made of what we think is energy, well more like wall of ionized rigid gases, we think. Second was to manifest a large pair of white and pink wings, I was totally not jealous at all with how pretty they looked, unfortunately we had no idea if she could file with them as she was too scared to go out in the open and dry. Secondly was embarrassed about showing how they appeared and disappeared as she needed a good portion of her back exposed. We did manage to get her, and her boyfriend, because I think he was getting jealous, to do some of the tests on strength and reflexes we put together. Overall her own performance was on part with what we could find in publicly available medical journals on the subject. Her boyfriend on the other hand did quite well, but given that he seemed to be a bit of a muscle head it seemed to make sense. We also didn't tell him that both myself and my brother outclassed him by this point. It was during a discussion with Samantha on how she could manifest her wings and barriers that Tim discovered something about himself. Tim in attempt to follow a similar pattern to what Samantha described and concentrated. Um what the fuck just happened, what the fuck is up with your server rack? Tim asked. As he pointed to the back of the servers, you're going to be to be more specific. I told Tim, I was concentrating in a similar manner to what Samantha described and all of a sudden I thought I saw flames shooting out the back of the server. Tim said in a quick rush, in fact I can still see them now, but it doesn't really look like fire now that I focus on it, can you point to where you are seeing this? I asked. I'm not sticking my finer near there, he said. Fine then use a pencil, but I can't see what you're seeing so I don't know what you are looking at I said with some exasperation. Samantha said Tim what does it look like? Is it spreading? Tim said I'm not sure, it almost looks like a campfire on its side. Or maybe a cone with some tattered edges? I don't know, and it's coming out the back of my servers? I asked again. Yeah, now where is a stick? Tim said mostly to himself. It wasn't until Tim poked the area with a stick that I got the first idea of what he might be seeing. Um you're poking at the exhaust fans. I think you are seeing thermal radiation or infrared band of the M spectrum somehow, I said with absolutely no confidence. Yeah, I think you're right, shit where is the reaction test that is several IR emitters? Tim said as he bolted into the garage. Okay, while well he is doing that. Samantha can you go over again how you manifest your wings and barrier? I asked. Sure but should he help him? I've seen him at the office run off like this and it generally means there is something new to learn. Samantha said, he'll be fine. 
If you ask Mike from your office about it though he will just tell you to ignore him. We both have a tendency to just dig into random stuff. Oh, you know Mike from our office? Samantha asked. Yeah, I worked with him and the rest of the engineering team for six years myself before moving on to other stuff. I left like four years ago. I told Samantha and her boyfriend, who I now noticed was look at me a little too intently. Through wall we hear the sound of Tim saying oh cool that worked, wait what else can I see? Wait, I though you were Tim's younger sister, um how old are you? She asked a bit confused. Oh um, no Tim is younger than I am by about 16 minutes. I said wait Tim is like in his mid 30s right? Also you are twins? That's so cool. She asked. Um yeah we are both 35, and yes we are identical twins. Then I registered two seconds later what I just said as Samantha and her boyfriend gave me a very confused look. Oh I'm right. I'm trans female. Tim and I were born identical, and I started transitioning a few years back I told the pair. By this point Tim run in from the garage. Okay so I can see IR and RF. I think I can even see V but I don't have a good isolated source for that right now. Tim said somewhat breathlessly. Um Tim, I think your sister is trying to fuck with us. She told me you two are identical. Samantha asked in bemusement. What's up? Yeah we are identical she used to look exactly like me. Tim said matter of fact. What? Samantha shouted out. You are messing with me now as well. She looks younger than I am and I'm 27. No. I'm definitely 35 and was born a boy, I'm seriously not trying to mess with you. Also do I really look that feminine to you? I know I could pull off androgynous before without a problem. I told her, no I seriously can't tell at all. How about you Jake? Samantha said. Oh good I needed a reminder of his name. Like seriously? No I could not tell at all. You are really like 35, you look closer to 25. Jake said a bit embarrassed for being put on the spot. Samantha, when you look at him, how old do you think he is? I asked her. Um, I know he is older than me but yeah now that you pointed out he does look way younger than I remember him being. I figured that was more due to the new set of muscles he has been working on. Samantha said, with just a hint of admiration. Oh I didn't work out to get these. They started to appear over the past few weeks. It's all somehow tied to Hen. Evelyn and myself being altered as well. Tim stated. Oh that's so fucking unfair. How much can you bench? Jake shouted out. Oh we can both bench 140. But that is because Evelyn only has some dynamic weights. We put in an order for a proper bench press setup but well shipping has become a bit of a nightmare. You'd think everyone would have learned from Covid. Tim said somewhat distractedly. Well there was that one test we did with the tie down straps and my car. I added in. What? Did you pull a car or something? Jake asked in a somewhat bewildered state. Um nope. We took two sets of tie down straps placed them where the hard points where a jack would go. And well we both lifted one side of the SUV. That's how I dislocated several of my ribs like five days ago. I told the shocked bear. You're telling me you each lifted something like 2,000 pounds? And what you dislocated several of your ribs but are perfectly fine now. Jake said in astonishment. Yup, and I can pick you up and carry you like a princess if you want me to. With my best shit-eating grin. Samantha added oh I have to see you do that. He would be mortified. Well I have to do what your girlfriend commands because it's funny I said as I chuckled, no please don't pick me up, I don't like being picked up it's, it's, fucking hell, Samantha get your picture quick this is embarrassing, Jake said in a resigned voice, after the shenanigans I took a deep breath and attempted to focus, right, well getting back on track, Samantha can you go over one more time how you manifest your abilities, there clearly is a similar link if Tim's current reaction is anything to go by, I directed towards Samantha. Sure. It feels almost like a limb like my arm or leg in my mind. At first I overlooked this new limb for the first few days while everyone figured out just what was going on. It felt almost instinctual like reaching out with my arm to grab something. Well as I tripped and started to tumble down our apartment building's stairs I threw out my arms in an attempt to grab something. I think I must have also thrown out that wall as well. In an attempt to stop myself, Samantha said as she replayed the memory in her mind. 
At first I was unsure what happened. It felt like I caught myself, which I guess I did, anyway that's when I could really notice that extra appendage. The feeling I got from it was not unlike a muscle getting tired from use. After pulling my effort away not unlike relaxing my arms is when the wall disappeared. She continued. At first I thought I was going crazy until I managed to do it again under my own conscious effort. I was honestly freaked out even after hesitantly showing Jake. Samantha finally telling her story. Thanks, and what about the wings? I asked. Just like the walls I can make, the wings feel like another set of appendages, she said but appeared to be shy about elaborating but continued, the wings only came out when Jake, um startled me, Samantha said with a blush, after taking a second to process, I figured I would not continue down that line of questioning, with a bit of embarrassment I asked so they feel like two different sets of appendages not unlike arms? Yup she quickly replayed. Closing my own eyes I concentrated and felt around my body and mind. Tim, does it feel like you had an extra set of eyelids correct? I asked my brother. Yup he said in confirmation. Yes I could feel the eyelids for lack of a better description, but I could feel more as well. Hesitantly I lifted this other phantom appendage, which felt like oddly enough kind of like a mouth of all things. After a moment of exploration I felt I could well open it. But as I did so I felt mouth was also not quite the correct term, it felt more like focusing on your hearing but even that was not correct, it was confusing and hard to explain. After another moment I impressed my will gently on this phantom appendage and discovered my body started to faintly glow. Okay I was not expecting that. With just a hint of alarm in my voice. What did you do? Tim asked. How are you glowing? Samantha asked in mild alarm. What the fuck? Jake stammered out loud, retracting my will I instead focused on pushing it to an external point, just above my palm. The light quickly transferred from my body to a floating point a few inches above my outstretched hand. Okay that's different, but I now know what you mean by instinct, I stated with a small smile on my lips. After continuing to feel around my mind and body I could feel several other points not too dissimilar from this phantom whatever to call it. Samantha, can you only feel your wings and your barriers? I asked. No I can feel one more but when I tried to push on it like the others nothing happened, she stated after a moment. <laughs> Interesting I said thoughtfully. Tim how many phantom appendages do you think you feel? I asked. Tim after a moment of concentration said I think I can feel like five or six in total. It's hard to say in at least one case. Yeah same, which is very interesting. I wonder what else we can do? I said thoughtfully. 2. Chapter 5. Continuing the Discoveries. Announcement. CW. Nudes. Violence. Sar. Tim and I continued to practice and evaluate our new abilities over the course of the next month. So as it turned out our faster healing and improved strength, reflexes, and stamina were not tied to any active ability. We still had no clue on how our healing worked but it seemed to be tied to some other factor we had yet to discover. Our best guess was genetic but we had no way to look into that at the moment. The light show I was able to put on was more complex than we originally assumed. It seemed we could project well light or other photons in a multitude of different ways. As it turned out we could project a lot of energy in this manner, easily to the point of blinding and damaging the optic nerve after an accident during a test. As I was attempt to see how bright of a light source I could generate I blinded Tim from a very bright pulse of visible light. Luckily for Tim his healing factor managed to repair his impaired vision after about a day. We also found out we could focus that light into a coherent beams and nearly blinded ourselves again due to backscatter when trying to cut into a steel plate. It took some practice but we discovered that our ability to perceive wider ranges of the electromagnetic spectrum. This range seemed to continue until we had reached the extremely low frequency range on the radio side, and all the way to the high end of ultraviolet frequencies. We suspected that this could continue on in both directions on the M spectrum but we had no way to test that out, that was until we discovered that we could emit more than just visible light. At that point we didn't want to experiment with X-ray or gamma without proper shielding, if being able to accidentally blind each other just from backscattering of a projected laser was anything to go by a gamma pulse would be far far worse. Alright, 
So what do you think we should do? I asked Tim as we had been sitting on a couch at his place one afternoon. I have no idea. Tim stated while looking up at the ceiling. Well clearly we can be dangerous which I do not really like. I also worry about what others with less moral restraint than us might do. I said, agreed. But what we fight other alter then? I'm all for beating the shit out of some asshole for attacking others but I'm not really a hero kind of person. Also what do we dress up and fight crime? I don't want to wear spandex and a cape. Tim said, looking at him with a quizzical expression. He was lean and ripped but not like a bodybuilder instead more like an incredibly dedicated athlete. While I shied away from the idea because he was my twin brother I don't think he realized how good looking he really was to most women now. I know from both looking in the mirrors and from some recent posts online, with my face blocked and a tripod, that people of all genders seemed very interested in me. What was even crazier was we didn't to put any effort in to maintain our appearance, it seemed to be tied to our healing, content warning, nudity, spoiler, collapse. I fully admitted to myself that I was absolutely in love with my new body. Going from a trans woman who still had a major body issues to this, I was riding the gender euphoria train at all hours of the day, I also felt stronger, my mind more clear, and I was as flexible as a ballerina from what I could tell, it was amazing but I still had sudden flashes of guilt for being so lucky, well while we are thinking things over I'm heading to the gym, I'll be back in a few hours text me if you need me to pick anything up after I told my brother oh ooh, grab a pepperoni pizza and on your way back extra greasy he said look even though we seem to always be in perfect health we still can't just always eat like shit well I guess we can but she shouldn't I rebuked but secretly agreed on the pizza the gym was almost completely empty even for the middle of the afternoon on the weekend most people were still nervous going particularly if they had been altered in a noticeable way. Crime by altered was also up around most of the world. While in the US things had not gotten so bad, likely due to the number of firearms everybody owned, and an increase in gun-related incidences, there were still problems with robbery and sexual assault. Just thinking about it made me sick. About 80 minutes into my workout an unusually large man came lumbering in. His attire really didn't fit well for a gym workout but he continued to the desk and after a moment of chatting started heading toward the locker room. Watching him from the corner of my eye, being the paranoid trans girl I am, something screamed in my mind that something was off. My anxiety shot through the roof of my heads. I could feel something was off about that big guy and the small guy that seemed to be trailing behind him, thinking to myself, what small guy? It's just the big dude, but I knew that was wrong for some reason. I concentrated on seeing the infrared wavelength and immediately noticed a smaller figure following behind, focusing back into an augmented visual spectrum, and when I mean augmented I mean everything becomes way more vibrant. I could see the little guy but he appeared wrong and distorted particularly for anything that was red, green, and blue. It was at this point that they both casually ducked not into the men's changing room but the women. My stomach dropped out from under me with a pulse of pure terror and fear. As soon as they disappeared I bolted over to the front desk. Content warning, descriptions of sexual assault and violence. Spoiler, after a quick dash to the front counter I see the attending employee sitting at a computer slumped over almost appearing to be asleep. Grabbing his arm and I attempted to shake him awake only to realize eyes are completely glazed over and staring into nothing. What the fuck is this guy on drugs or something? I said to myself in a rush, he was going to be of no help to anyone at the moment. I quickly picked up the phone behind the counter and attempted to dial 911. 911 operator what is your emergency? A clear male voice answered on the phone. I am at the builder's gym at 3190 Ascent Road, Falls Church. Two suspicious men entered the women's locker room and the employee at the front desk appears to be incapacitated. I told the operator as calmly and clearly as I could. I am sending officers to Builders Gym at 3190 Ascent Road, Falls Church right away. Are there any injuries? Can I get your name? The operator smoothly replied. Um I'm not sure what's wrong with the man at the desk. My name is Evelyn I am not an employee but someone who was just working out. I responded back. Understood, are you in immediate danger Evelyn? If so just drop the phone and locate a safe place immediately. 
The operator continued. No, I am not in any direct danger from what I can tell him. Him. Not sure if anyone else was in the locker room. I said in a growing panic. Fuck I needed to help if someone was in trouble. Okay Evelyn, please stay on the line with me until officers arrive. Everything will be okay. The operator said projecting as much calm as he could toward me. Fuck I need to make sure no one else is in danger in there. I will be right back. I quickly told the operator. Evelyn, please stay on the line officers will be there shortly. Said the operator. I could hear the rising worry and tension in the operator's voice as I let the phone dangle from the cord over the desk. Fuck fuck fuck. What do I do? I was thinking in a panic. I could just listen at the door and see if I heard anything then get right back to the phone. As my mind continued to race as quietly as I could ran over to the women's locker room and listened near the door. My panic and terror turned dice cold. I could hear the muffled sounds of struggling coming from the other side. Hearing a quiet commanding voice shut the fuck up you bitch. It's only going to get worse for you if you struggle. The last part I could hear undisguised amusement in that man's voice. Fuck. 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 I very gently tried to open the door to get a better look. I was then greeted by the disgusting backside of the large man. Fuck. 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 I let go of the door and was starting to creep back when the door exploded outward almost being knocked off its hinges by the large man. He grabbed me by one hand around my face and head then pulled me into the locker room. Fuck 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 fuck. This guy was fast and strong. As soon as he pulled me inside I felt my ass clip the sink counter and the back of my head smashed into the mirror behind me. I could feel the broken mirror grinding behind my head. The pain had not even registered yet. Looky here I found another snack. He was leering at me with a disgusting smirk. I'd attempted to pry his fingers off my mouth and face. They felt like thick disgusting sweaty sausages, his fingers barely moved. Oh uh, ooh, she seems like she will be fun. She almost moved my one of my fingers, he said with amusement and glee in his eyes. This fucker was crazy strong, was he altered? I was also able to get a look at the smaller guy properly now. He looked like somewhat rat-like, and where those sharp buck teeth. He was pressing up another woman to a wall painfully, but it appeared his partner's outburst distracted him. I needed to get away from this disgusting giant and help the other woman. I attempted to pull one or both of my legs to my chest and push him away but as soon as I tried he punched me in the gut. The punch knocked all the air out of me and threw my assailant's dirty fingers. I was panicking I could not even open my jaw enough to try and bite down on his fucking sausage fingers. He he your tough will give you that, and feisty. I'm going to enjoy you, he told me. Fuck. He was going to rape me. Kill me. I needed to get free. I tried to focus on summing a blinding light but was having too much difficulty concentrating. I switched tactics and reached for one of the three other phantom appendages in a desperate attempt to escape. I felt one of them snap into place and I got the feeling to push as hard as I could. Water from the sink began to spurry me from the side. During that the giant of a man grunted in pain releasing his grip and took a step back. I could see a bit of silver like metal poking out from his lower gut and I could see blood dripping from him as well. Not sure what happened but not caring I finally got my legs in between me and my assailant and pushed back as hard as possible. He began to stumble back into one of the toilet stalls but managed to catch himself between two partitions. I could still feel that new invisible force and it pointed right to what I now understood was the sink's faucet. I pushed again and continued to apply pressure, and saw the ruined faucet sink in further. The giant fuck grunted in pain again and attempted to pull the faucet out while stumbling back and landing ass on the toilet with a dazed and confused look on his face. I had yet another impression as he landed on the toilet. I could tie the faucet around something else and I knew that would help keep him there. So I did. Fuck no time to think about what I just did. I needed to help the other woman. The rat man was horribly distracted but that gave me an opportunity to at least try and knock him off. The helpless woman running up I barreled into the rat man and all three of us tumbled to the ground. Without really thinking I pushed my way in between the woman and her assailant. Rat fuck was clearly nowhere near as strong as I was at least. I bodily pushed the woman away under the sinks and yelled at her to run. 
It was at this point that I discovered Ratfuck here had a knife in his other hand, as I felt a sharp pain in my lower right thigh. Oh fuck that hurt. Without worrying about the additional damage I was going to cause myself I managed to get my legs in between my torso and Ratfuck. I kicked and pushed as hard as I possibly could into Ratfuck's chest. I felt something pop go up my left leg when I did this. Both myself and Ratfuck slipped back by several feet. Him sliding into a bench near the showers and me into the wall under the sinks. My right leg was in agony but my left leg strange felt okay. It was not until I managed to get a better look at the struggling rat fuck that I think I pieced together what happened. The kick into his chest looked to have broken some of his ribs on the right side. I think a rib had punctured a lung as he was having difficulty breathing. Grimacing in pain as he pushed himself up into a somewhat kneeling position trying to get his legs under him he said you fuck bitch I'm going to absolute enjoy what I'm going to do next to you then disappeared fuck where did he go he must be altered as well I thought to myself as I frantically looked around half a second later I realized I could see through whatever he was doing with my own abilities and quickly switched to IR. Yep there he was starting to shuffle toward me from my left side as I had my right next to the wall to help support my injured leg. He froze in place when I looked right at him. How the fuck can you see me you fucking bitch? He yelled at me in confusion. I ignored him and summoned that new ability again. I seemed to be able to control metals in some fashion. I looked at a faucet focused and will for the metal object to embed itself in his skull. Another spray of water. A wet crunch and the figure in front of me fell to the floor. Collapse 2. Chapter 6, Recovery and Magnetism. Not two minutes after hobbling out of the woman's changing room did the cops show up. By this point I was already laying down on my back with my right leg elevated by two of those step workout platforms. I was only just starting to get comfortable, or as comfortable as I can get with a 5 inch knife sticking in my thigh. When I heard the sirens and saw the flashing lights, I think I could hear a fire truck and ambulance as well but was unsure. Due to what I assumed was mild blood loss I wondered to myself why does a fire truck show up when there is no fire reported. The cops apparently felt threatened enough to have the guns drawn after I'm assuming they noticed the listless employee. They next spotted me with my elevated leg as well the woman that was in the locker room originally. I could not remember when she left but things felt a little fuzzy so I figured that was okay. Snapping back to my senses a little bit I pointed over to the woman changing room and held up two fingers in a peace sign. I just hope they understood I was indicating two assailants and not saying I bring them peace and love. One of the cops moved over to peek in the door, then cursed in alarm and began quickly talk into his radio. It was a minute after the radio call that the EMTs and fire department came into the building. Quickly spreading out I noticed the cute EMT come over to me. The EMT knelt down next to me and started unpacking tools and gloves from her red bag. Hi I'm Megan, I'm just going to be taking a look at your injuries if that's okay. What's your name? The entire line sounded very rehearsed so I told her so. Hi. Yep it's fine, my name is Evelyn, and your pickup line sounded very rehearsed. Megan had a momentary pause as she proceeded what I just said and started to develop a bit of a blush. Then quickly went back to examining the knife wound. With a small chuckle that's the same line I give to everyone I am in the process of evaluating. I'm just surprised at your response as more often than not it's some older gentleman following a heart attack, or overly drunk college kids. She began to gently wipe away some of the excess blood for what I assumed was checking for additional bleeding. Oh yeah well that is because I find you cute and I think I have a mild amount of blood loss so I'm not really processing what I am saying fully. I said with a little giggle then a grimaced as she poked near the knife. Give me a moment to check your vitals, particularly you blood pressure and pulse socks. Do you feel any other injuries besides the knife wound? How is the pain for you? You seem to be managing well. She stated going back into a more professional mode. No other injuries that I can tell, but likely bruised up all over so yay for that. As for pain the knife wound doesn't feel great but you should see the other guy. I said with a small chuckle before I registered what I had just said. I thinking I'm going to have a panic attack. Is that okay? Megan looked at me worriedly. I would not recommend it right now. Can you tell me what's wrong? I.
I think I might have killed one of them I whisper as tears started to flow down my cheeks. Megan waved over one of the fire department guys that were checking to make sure there were no more injured people hiding and asked him to take a peek in the woman's changing room to verify the condition of the two assailants. After a moment um Megan, one has no pulse, while the other is in grim shape. James, your EMT and Frank one of mine are also unable to move him away from the toilet. He's somehow stuck, the fireman whose suit had Alan embroidered on it said. He also seemed to be in a bit of shock at what he just saw. I began to silently weep. Apparently I was the most injured out of everyone and was the first loaded up on the ambulance. It took a solid three minutes to realize that a cop by the name of Jay Henderson based on his name tag was also accompanying me. It left me with a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach again but hey at least I wasn't in handcuffs. After that thought I really did check my hands to see if I was handcuffed to the stretcher. I wasn't. So I'm um, Mr. Henderson. So are you chaperone to ensure I don't cause any more trouble? I asked with my best puppy dog eyes. He smiled at me and with a small chuckle said you can call me James, and officially I'm just here to keep an eye on you. Oh I said not really sure how to continue the conversation. Unofficially we would love to know what you did, we have had suspicions that both were altered and we have had dealings with them before the even, not nice people by any stretch. Also based on all the evidence of so far seen you were just defending yourself he quietly told me. Oh well that makes me feel a little better. I said with a small smile. So what's your opinion on altered? I asked with hesitation. I feel sorry for many, everyone has been affected in some way but most altered got the worst of it. James told me, we have been dealing with far more petty crime in the past month and a half. Many are just teens and young adults had been forced out of their homes with nothing. James continued. Fuck. I didn't even think about that aspect of it. I would like to help but I'm unsure how. I said. I don't know if there is anything you can do. The problem is on the parents for abandoning them. Hell even many adults have problems. Being fired or let go for being altered or kicked out of due to fear. James said. By this point in the conversation we finally got me to the ER. During this time I was twitched again, connected up to some monitors and asked my information. At this point I panicked. Again, so far I had managed to not tell anyone my information and was kind of hoping I would slip away, but I doubted that would happen now. I had few options, if the cops were required to run a background check on me then it would not take them long to realize I lied. I was less concerned with the hospital as I could in theory pay with cash if I had to. No at this point I would only cause more trouble if I lied, I tell the truth now, build trust and try to sidestep question later. It's not like the US government didn't know who I was before being altered, the security clearance process does be like that though, take a deep breath I began to recite my name is Evelyn, after I was hooked up to all the monitors and was checked to make sure I would not bleed to death it was just James and myself, so what might happen if I admit that I am altered, hypothetically speaking I asked with hesitation. I felt like he already heavily suspected just based on the way the two thugs were handled, honestly at the moment, nothing, the kids that we have picked up, yeah they could really use some help from someone who understands them better, it would also be better if some of our own department could learn as well, most of the time we are also just dealing with confused and scared people, he quietly informed me, there was no thought needed. If kids needed help and support and I had something to offer I would, yeah, I'll do it, hopefully I can give some people back a small level of control, I told him with determination. After a moment's pause, okay then lesson 1 altered availability fall into two different categories. From what I can tell, I began to tell him, wait what, shouldn't I be writing this down or something? Also didn't you lose a good bit of blood? Should you even be trying to explain any of this in your state? James asked and honest concern and even a little bit of wide eye panic. I'll be fine. This is a great example of how a static alteration works. Oh wait you don't see any doctors or nurses outside do you? I asked. James just looked at me with a bemused expression. I'll check one second. Nope it looks clear. Oh good okay so lesson 1 static salted abilities are changes that the person in question has no control over. 
more commonly you might notice someone with mildly changed features. These changes don't have to be visible however and I suspect take place at a genetic level. Like in my case I now heal something like 800% faster than average. I even see a mild rate increase from adrenaline. Somehow, sorry I'm not a biologist by so most of what I am telling you is mostly speculation. I told him, there is more to this process as well. Based on our speculation we have not even come close to really start to understand how altered work. I continued with a little less confidence. Okay well anyway, part 2 of lesson 1 are active altered abilities. You know I need a better way to say that. It's already a mouthful. I said while thinking to myself. Okay but what about part 2? James asked with mock patience. Oh right active altered abilities, also maybe you were right about the blood loss bit my mind is scattered. As I tried to pick back up where I left off. Oh right. Active abilities are abilities that someone normally need to make a conscious effort to use or maintain. I stated. One of my abilities is apparently to manipulate metals via magnetic fields. I think I only figured this out about an hour ago. As my mouth kept spitting out words. So if I concentrate I can see the knife in my leg at very high detail. Like I can tell you it's serrated on the back side of the knife for about three quarters of it. I continued on while focusing at my leg. If I push on the edge of the blade just right I can remove some of the danger involved with just pulling it out. I more mumbled to myself. But in my mind's eye I could see the blade getting duller as I concentrate. I'm not entirely sure what you are going on about. You seem to be mumbling your words quite a bit. James commented. Evelyn you doing okay? He asked more forcefully when I didn't respond. Oh yep. Sorry a little distracted right now I told him. After about a three or four minutes of silence I grunted in a shock of pain as the knife very slowly slipped out of my thigh by maybe an inch. Blood started to slowly drip from the wound. Okay yeah, that might have been a mistake. I forgot about that the pressure from the knife might have been keeping the bleeding down. I said sheepishly. You think? How about this? You wait for the doctor to pull it out and maybe try not to die from blood loss. He scolded me. Yeah. Maybe you're right I'm nothing thinking straight. Magneto. That's what this new ability reminds me of. Or wait did he just manipulate metal? James do you know which? I asked, in a nice clear strong voice. I'm sorry no I didn't catch any of what you just said. You are just rambling quietly to yourself. Would you like me to get a nurse? He asked gently as he got up from the chair he was sitting at on my left. Taking a quick look at the knife wound he yelled fuck, I need assistance in here the patient's injury is bleeding heavily again. Looking over again I could now see what he was in a panic about. What I thought was a few drops was in fact a thin stream. Oh that's bad. Then I passed out. 1. Chapter 7. Don't play doctor. Coming back to consciousness I felt like garbage. Yug. I feel like shit. I quietly told my pillow. As I began to slowly and gingerly move around. Hey he, Eve you doing okay? A very familiar voice asked me a few feet away. Fuck me what happened? And no I feel like dog vomit. Any water? In a croaking whisper to my brother. Yeah, I have some water right here. You um need help drinking? Reaching to outside my view to grab a cup. Weakly nodding I then felt the paper cup touch my lips and started gulping down water immediately. Or at least I started to until some went down the wrong pipe and I began a coughing fit. Yeah you're going to need to slow down. As he pulled the cup away. After a more successful second attempt he started to inform me about what he had heard since I was admitted. So apparently the staff is under the impression you tried to remove the knife from your thigh. So now I'm going to ask, why did you think it was a good idea to attempt it? They needed to give you three units of blood to bring your blood pressure back up into an acceptable range, he told me with a scolding tone. They are also running a toxicology screening on you too, I guess to verify you weren't or any drugs, or some sort of suicide attempt. I have no idea what that might look like with us now but hopefully it doesn't want to make them dig deeper, he flatly stated, after a few more drinks of water I was starting to feel a little better. I am. Um, didn't intend for that to happen, I said then started looking around. Anyone nearby? I asked. Nurse just left a few minutes ago and it will be a few minutes before they will check up again. As long as we are quiet we should be okay. 
he stated in a whisper. K. So I guess the most recent thing was I think I figured out what two of the other locked abilities are, I whispered back. K. And how does that translate to almost bleeding to death? he asked. Oh um I was attempting to dull the serrated parts of the knife and blade in an attempt to minimize the damage before they pulled it out. I told him, okay, still not entirely following why or how you even accidentally pulled the knife out with no assistance. He responded back, right. Well I think when I dulled the serrations my muscle was under tension still and it slipped. Or at least that's my guess, I told him sheepishly. Okay I think I get that. So I guess my next question is how did you dull it? He asked now with more of a sense of curiosity. Okay so I think I or well we can control metal. Or well magnetic fields. The knife was ferrous and I was able to push on the blade's edges. It's kind of hard to explain right now. As to why I only just discovered this new ability well that's likely due to stress in a life or death situation. I continued sheepishly. Okay well I think we can tell the nurse that the knife must have slipped a bit on its own. At least I hope it's convincing. The less questions asked the better. I don't want my sibling sent to some research lab run by a shady defense contractor. He stated a little more firmly. We can dig into the new ability later. Oh by the way, was there a cop by the name of James anywhere? He um knows about me. It's complicated but he's keeping it close to the chest and the making sure his department does the same, I said with worry knowing the possible reaction about to occur. Oh fuck us, the cops know, I was concerned with the hospital but mostly because they would report it to the cops, my brother said with frustration. Look, they were suspicious the moment they discovered the state of the two attackers. Fuck me I think I killed both of them. Feeling tears trying to come out but still too dehydrated. Fuck. Okay okay. Fair I get that. I guess we can go over that later as well. Any other surprises besides a deadly case of self-defense? He asked while at frustration cooled somewhat. No that covers it for now. More water? I think I good to drink it on my own now. I asked him. Over the next several minutes I also gave him a rundown of what happened at the gym while waiting for a nurse. He honestly seemed a little surprised and impressed. I was surprised because I expected more anger than anything for getting into the situation to begin with. The deaths did worry him though. And he told me he would look into a lawyer just in case. At this point an unfamiliar nurse arrived and greeted me. Evening Evelyn I'm Susan. How are you feeling? She asked in a kind of professional tone. Fine I guess for being a stab victim. I'm also starving come to think of it. I responded. Well I'll put in a dinner order for you. Any food allergies? She asked. Maybe shellfish? Hard to say I've had reactions before. But other than that nothing. I replied. Okay give me one moment to put that in and then I would like to ask you a few more questions. She stated, as soon as she left the room and using our twin powers we synced up. And by synced up we both gave each other mildly worried looks. After a moment the nurse came back in the room and started questioning me. So it's not uncommon for many people when exposed to traumatic events to blame themselves even when in self-defense. Can you tell me how you're feeling? She stated then asked. Oh great. They think I'm a suicide risk this is going to really suck. Honestly in pain and questions my actions to a limited extent still. I didn't intend to cripple or um severely injure anyone so I am still processing that. However I also know I was outnumbered and outmatched. I did what I felt was necessary to protect myself and others. I responded with only a small amount of shaking in my voice. Okay and can would you be willing to tell me what happened down in the ER? She asked in a nice but professional manner. Honestly the knife slipped out of my thigh a little bit. I'm guess from my muscles continuing to spasm. If you're worried that I am a self-harm risk then you have nothing to worry about. I was not trying to do anything. Drastic. Am I upset about what happened? Yes do I wish I could go back in time and do things a little differently? Yes. But what's happened has happened, and they were clearly very dangerous men. I told her, with just a little bit of heat to my words near the end. Adjusting to look at him on the other side of the room she asked and your honest opinion on the matter? Has she ever shown any dangerous tendencies? I only asked to make sure the safety of our patient nothing more. After a moment of thought Tim responded, nope. 
Evelyn's been fine for all my life. She's seen her ups and downs but nothing to a self-harm extreme. Honestly after talking with her I think the knife just slipped out. After an additional moment of Nurse Susan taking some notes, then starts to pack up her small set of supplies. Okay, well I can put down that I am satisfied that you are not a risk for self-harm. Do you have any questions for me before I leave? Oh also your dinner should be here in a few minutes. Yep just one quick one. You're not a real nurse are you? I asked in my most playful manner. After a moment and a small smile of amusement I am in fact trained to be a nurse. But yes I'm a licensed psychologist. Then after a momentary pause she asked so off the record do either of you mind telling what exactly happened with the knife? Your story seems valid but there is tension there and that is giving us concern. Note I am still bound by the Hippocratic Oath, bearing very specific circumstances regarding life and death what you tell me will not be uttered to anyone else. After that small speech I looked at my brother, signaling to him but I don't mind telling. With a sigh he responded with it's your choice you're an adult, nodding and making up my mind. Can you close the door for a moment? Luckily while my room was not private I was the only patient in here at this time. Susan then got up closed the door and was about to get out her notepad when I stopped her. I would like no written record of this please. And with a small sigh she complied. So I'm unsure how obvious it is but I am altered. I quietly told her. It was not obvious but there were some suspicions. She told me with a small smile. Yeah well I was using one of my abilities to um dull parts of the knife in order to reduce risk of additional damage. I'm thinking the serrations were helping keep the knife stable as my right thigh was still spasming on occasion. I continued. Yes and now I understand why you were hesitant to tell anyone this. I am also thankful that you put your trust in me. I'm aware of the political and social climate around Alton. and well if the media ever found out about something like this they would have a field day, Susan said. At this point there was a light knocking at the door and I could see the face of an orderly with a tray. Oh fuck yes. I'm starving. Tim can you get that? I asked. After I started to shift myself in the bed and began to eat, Susan directed her attention to my brother Tim. So I shouldn't be asking this. But given your relation are you altered as well? The same Hippocratic oath still applies. She asked Tim. After a moment of thought he quietly said, yes. And I hope you realize the problems that can present. Again I understand at least some of your concerns, but you seem to have more worries. She stated, we would be incredibly valuable for understand how altered well work. He said with grudging reluctance. Ah. I think I understand. Sorry I can't tell but um what is the age gap between the two of you? She asked. With a small smile I responded with oh about 16 minutes. Ah so you are twins. I can obviously see the family relation but would not have guessed otherwise. She stated. Oh uh, ooh. It's a little more complex than that. I told her with my continued amusement. I know Tim didn't like me bringing it up but fuck him I enjoy it. We are identical. I'm trans female. Susan looked at me with a sense of confusion. Wow um, I never would have guessed that. With a small bit of shock. Yeah, I started transitions when I was about 30. As I continued to smile, she and confused grabbed my chart. Wait you are telling me you're both 35 years old? I would have guessed you are both 25 at your oldest. Tim was both annoyed and a little amused now. He preferred to be 100% secret about everything but he still has an ego. Yeah. When we became altered our bodies seemed to shift over to near peak human condition. No we have no idea how that happened. I stated. Okay. I would be lying if I said I'm not jealous. To be back at peak of my physical well-being. Also to look like that. Yeah. She said with clear envy in her tone. After a moment well I do thank the two of you for being honest. I can certainly understand why you were both hesitant, Susan said, after a few more pleasantries she left. Well that could have gone worse. I told my brother, I just hope we don't come to regret telling her anything, Tim said with resignation. 1. Chapter 8. Trusting Other. I was feeling much better a little while after dinner. Yay crazy mysterious metabolism. The hospital heavily recommended that I stay the night to be observed. As much as I would have liked to sleep in my own bed, 
I also didn't want to draw any more attention to myself and told Tim to pick me up in the morning. Luckily I discovered a cop by the name of James had collected my personal belongings from the gym and left a small note. Was good to meet contact me after you've recovered. Cell is 703 555 71831 Note https colon slash slash n dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash 555 underscore telephone underscore number. James. Okay well I guess he trusted me enough to leave me on my own. Or he assumed I was going to be out of it for several more days at a minimum. The next morning a different nurse was checking my bandage which was good. The knife wound on my right thigh looked far better than it had any right to. The nurse didn't comment either other than saying it looked like it was starting healing well. I really need to figure out what normal recovery times look like otherwise people might get suspicious. Damn it Tim thanks for making me paranoid. The next concern I had was about paying. Due to my personal skill set and career I was not so much worried about the money but about drawing more attention to myself. Filling too many clams with my work's insurance might be suspicious for a software engineer that works remotely. I decided to tell them I did not have insurance but could pay cash. $200 was not so bad but they also informed me that I would be receiving additional bill in a few weeks. I really hated the American health system it's a nightmare. And I count myself as one of the lucky ones. Tim picked me up like I asked him to and we started to talk. Unlike what most might think instead of focusing on the attack we talked about my or well our latest abilities. So yeah, it took me about 30 minutes of probing and practicing but I was finally able to manipulate objects with ferromagnetic properties Tim told me. I also noticed that when looking at object with I'm not doing it with my eyes, did you notice the same thing? He continued, oh no I was not paying that close attention. Then again I was more focused on fight or don't bleed out. I responded, right. Well something I found rather interesting was the detail I could focus down on, or maybe call it resolution it's hard to say. Tim said, I think I was able to view at a near microscopic level, although I didn't have any scale to compare to so I was unsure. Oh also I was able to clearly see the flux field sort of a cloud and to a very high level of detail. It's really fascinating. He continued, oh hell give me a second I need to try that. I told him, I was able to select and focus in on one of my two additional methods of sight. I could of course feel my regular sight, the wide electromagnetic spectrum. And now this magnetic sense. I think I got an idea of what Tim was saying too about our sight not being tied directly to our eyes. I could see many of the metallic parts in the vehicle even through other objects which really didn't make any sense. Magnetic fields was based on what I thought was electron flow and interactions with different materials. The electromagnetic spectrum was dealing with the emission and propagation of photons. If only I could remember my physics classes from high school which was like half a lifetime ago. I took a mental note to do some research in both areas. As I experimented I did also notice that I could overlay all these senses at once and surprising without overloading my mind. That actually worried me a little bit, from what I could tell I was seeing my biological sight, normal vision. A very large section of the electromagnetic spectrum down in low radio all the way up to high X-ray and the maybe gamma, and now magnetism. That should have been like trying to sprint, eat a five course meal, described said meal work on physics proofs, and develop some crazy computer software library. All at the same time, I could not remember for sure but I didn't think the human brain was especially good at multitasking instead using a combination of task switching and task triggering from sensory input. Then again I was not a neurologist so what the fuck did I know? You coming in? Tim asked. Do what? Looking around only to realize we were back at my townhouse. Going inside I was greeted by happy kitties and after greeting them all with some snuggles and scritches I went to make something to eat. I was starving. So any plans or courses of action we should take you think? I asked as I was stuffing salami and cheese in my mouth. Not really. What about work? We both still need to make money. My office has gone back to COVID rules which the rest of the engineering team obviously enjoys, he said. I've been remote for the past several jobs, it has not been too busy luckily. I think the company is doing better as well.
It was rocky for a little while but I think we held up. What are you thinking? I asked. Well I want to get a better handle on what we can do. But based on what happened yesterday I suspect we might do some unintentional damage, he stated. That's true. Any ideas on how we want to handle that? Obviously we don't want to do it around populated areas, and I would also like to avoid being seen. I said. Pondering Tim said, yeah agreed. I wish we were closer to the desert or something. We could just go deep into the desert mess around for a few days then come back to civilization, after a few minutes of thinking and me eating. How about a decommissioned quarry? I'm not sure how that works but maybe we can find something a few hundred miles away. We could likely camp in the area if it's isolated enough. Hell if we go out west a few hundred miles we might be able to even cut down on light pollution. Bring some telescopes and say we are just amateur astronomy. I said thoughtfully. Yay that could work. And I just realized because we can project light and pin it to objects we could do all the practice at night to help cover our tracks, he said with some excitement, as I had finished off all of the good and real food during the brainstorming. I had started just taking slices of brick and covering them in mayonnaise. I hated mayonnaise but my body craved food. Okay so first thing, we need more food. As this is disgusting what I am eating. Second what is this about sticking light to objects? After several days of collecting camping supplies, food and other supplies we felt we had all the equipment prepped. We had also found four different candidate sites to do our experiments in unfortunately none of them were close by each other. If one didn't go well it was going to take several hundred more miles to get to the next one. We also got with our respective managers to ensure we would still have jobs after this, particularly if it took more than a week. Luckily we trusted the people we worked with and told select people we knew we could trust our real plans. We ended up getting more support than we expected, everyone knew at least someone that was altered in some way. I think the co-workers we specifically told were holding out some hope of bringing some level of normally to other altered's lives. As long as we didn't go completely dark we could likely get away with these plans for a month or two. Well it was a good thing for audiobooks because driving was boring. 8.5 hours got us to the first possible location which was a bust. The images we found on Google Maps had been a few years out of date and didn't have the trailer park a few miles up the road. We would likely have been fine anyway but we wanted to reduce risk. Another 4.5 hours of driving layer we got to the second location which was much better if in the middle of nowhere West Virginia. We did have to spend 20 minutes driving to get a cell signal but we wanted solitude for what we were about to do. We took the time to find a safe space for camp and our vehicle and properly scout out the majority of the query, as we had also done some of the research and did pick up like three different types of Geiger counters. We thought we might be able to tell about gamma emissions but well alpha and beta still scared us. Luckily we didn't pick up too much radiation, if we did do serious damage or kick up large amounts stone dust we would then wait for it to rain before continuing. We were a paranoid bear. After setting up camp and everything we has built a small campfire we're heating up dinner. So how do you feel about your changes? I asked. So far I like them. Mostly, he said. Mostly? I asked. Yeah I do like the physical attributes of my body but the appearance still messes with me. I almost don't feel like me anymore, he said. Ha. Huh. You do realize you are still you right? I mean yes you look different but honestly if you worked hard enough for it you could still look like that now. If not as young. I said. I know and I'm still trying to convince myself of it. I also remember that one time you managed to lose tons of weight and I can now see the elements of that as well. That part feels a bit weird though. You lost all that weight initially because you were dead set on transitioning, he said. I now look like a younger buffer version of that and it's messing with my head. I kind of feel like I'm seeing you in the mirror and not me. Well a you before you were Evelyn, he continued. Welcome to the life of body dysphoria. It can hit you in very weird ways. I told him, but I like my body even now, he said with a bit of heat and anger. Yes but it does not feel like you and that's the problem. It does not help though that there is extra baggage to your physical appearance now. I said, you're not wrong, 
I'm wondering if I would be in this mood if I was not a twin, he said with a regretful sigh. Oh I also have one other concern, which I don't know if you considered yet, he said. And what's that? I asked. What if we no longer rage, he said. I paused for a moment. I mean then we get to look like we are in our early to mid twenties our entire life, I asked. You know what I really mean, he said. Fuck he was right, I didn't even question it. As our bodies continued to heal we would stop, or maybe already have stopped, biologically aging. Fuck why did you have to point that out to me right now? I asked. In case you hadn't thought of it before. Sorry if that hurts by the way, he said apologetically. I mean I knew we would outlive mom and Jim. But Zach and Nicole? That gets a bit weird yeah, I said. And if we have any children ourselves? We could very well outlive them and our spouses. Fuck that's disturbing and heartbreaking, I continued. Okay what about suicide pack we throw ourselves into a volcano or something? I asked him. Sure if we reach the point we can do that. Assuming we can die of old age or something, he said. We both knew we were joking. But we also knew we were not. After that depressing conversation we ate dinner quietly then headed to bed. The next day we got down to it and started to really break stuff. We started off with ionizing UV frequencies. Then we moved up to X-ray. One of the early problems we encountered was problems due to backscatter of photons. This meant that any time we fired a pulse of photons some of that could reflect back to us. This was already a well understood safety issue with high energy lasers but normally robotic arms and thick metal shielding would be used. We figured out we could produce a shield. Was odd even calling it a shield seemed like a bit of a misnomer. We could generate a plane of force or wall that only interacted with photons of designated frequencies. It worked kind of like how we selected what we frequency we could see in or what frequency we could project. The shield would appear as a void when we looked at it in the specific frequency it was targeted for. It honestly kind of gave me the creeps. Just for fun we generated a shield for visible light and did have the impression of looking into a black hole. We also didn't experience a backscatter or penetration. Our best guess was it teleported the photons. How or to where we had no ideas yet. We did on the other hand figure out we could surround our bodies completely with these barriers. Let me tell you it looks really creepy to see a man shaped hole move toward you. We also figured out that we could project our emission point to several feet away from our body. It took far more concentration to maintain the emission but we still had full control over it. Whereas being able to stick an emission source to a location or object only lasted a few minutes to a few hours depending on how intense it was. The shield and emission projection did give us an idea however. We could each generate several shields and each could overlap in all sorts of configurations. We ended up building a large box that we felt would block high energy X-ray and gamma wavelengths. We got to testing by burning down large rocks, boulders and even into the hill where the limestone came from. The hill in particular was kind of scary. It looked more like a high powered rocket engine was pointed at the hill, blackened and somewhat melted. We also took the time to really investigate our ability to manipulate ferromagnetic objects and magnetic fields in general. We could temporarily or permanently remove magnetism from both permanent and electromagnets. We could also give magnetic properties to previously unmagnetized ferromagnetic materials and project magnetic field. The last was the most interesting and the one that made us realize something. Okay tell me what is wrong with this picture. I began to demonstrate to Tim by pressing a magnetic field through a chunk of rebar. The rebar had previously been wrapped with shielded copper wire and we used it to test the removal of the magnetic field from the electromagnet. Now instead of a car battery connected to the two terminals I had a thin stand of copper to complete the circuit of the coiled wire. After only a fraction of a second the thin copper wire vaporized. Okay great you vaporized a copper wire. He said a bit confused. Yes. Yes I did, but why did it vaporize? I asked. Well because the magnetic field induced a current in the coiled copper wire. He said as he trialed off looking at me with wide eyes. Yes now you understand, where did the power come from? I asked. Your body? 
but he was not convinced of his own statement he has been doing many of the same tests and experiments I had. We should have seen it too when we generate the photons. The energy we have been using to do work any of our abilities is not even a drop in the bucket from the kinds of power outputs we have seen. I stated in excitement. Fuck that leaves only two options then. First we don't generate any of this we just create what opening? He asked. That seems more reasonable than the second that's for sure. I said. Yay the second option violates law of conservation of energy. Yay let's hope it's the first option. He said still processing the discussion. One of the ideas we worked on was movement aided or augmented by our abilities. Magneto could fly why not us? Turns out trying to adapt concepts from science fiction into science fact or whatever our universe has turned into was a lot easier said than done. With some practice we did manage to push two magnetized objects apart. The process was basically like pushing two south pole magnetic together. They didn't want to move closer together. We experimented with this process for two days. We strapped metal objects to our body and expanded the magnetic fields to throw us. It was not a pleasant process and the bruising and sprains were taking their toll. Our problem was we could not actually affect our bodies with the magnetic fields. Or well we could but it took so much concentration and effort we were exhausted in seconds. It was also more like levitation than flight. The Earth's magnetic field was too weak to push ourselves off of either. However we did find a very convenient workaround. Fuck. I have nothing still I said. I had taken up aimlessly throwing a ball bearing and pulling it back to me. Um. What you doing? He asked, staring at me with an amused expression. Nothing why what are you looking at? I said with a bit of heat and frustration. Okay. Um how are you pulling the ball bearing back to you? He asked. I don't know. I just am. I said angrily. I had a headache and was bruised and sore from my last attempt at Magalef surfing. Yes, you throw it out and then pull it back. But what do you pull it back to? He asked with patience. I don't know my hand. I said, and then it clicked. I pulled the ball bearing back to my hand and made it hover. Oh my god we are idiots. I said. Yep. I only just realized it myself when I noticed you were play with the ball of steel. Hell we've both been doing this now for several days when we move other chunks of metal around, he said with the biggest stupidest grin on his face. See, how we had been moving metal around was not by pushing or pull from other metal objects. No it was more we had a magnetic point that we could position with our minds. We could control how strong that point was which in turn controlled the overall strength of the field. That point even allowed us to also manipulate the shape of the field. We still didn't understand how any of this really worked but it at least showed us what we didn't know. After several hours of work we were ready to try our first flight. Focusing on the modified climbing harness I had strapped metal bars to. I picked up the bars. The harness pulled tight then lifted me up. I could feel the metal bar being dragged by the point I had control over. While the metal bar interacted with the magnetic field and the magnetic field interacted with the bar, neither seemed to have an impact on the point I created. My mind was the only thing that dictated the point's actions. The more I thought about the more it made a sort of sense. While Tim's and I's abilities operated only in specific domains, it seemed little more than manipulation of some sort of portal, gateway, or wormhole. 1. Chapter 9, Taking Action After over a week of practicing our abilities and getting a feel for how they worked we came up with one last test. Well lesser test and more a sparing match between myself and my brother. So how do we want to do this any ideas? I asked. I don't know um first blood or tap out? He said. We are effectively firing lasers unless we only fight via magnetics. Tap out might work but that could get messy if we push ourselves too hard. I told him. Really first blood. After a moment what about this? We string a tag through our belt or belt loop. The first one to capture or destroy the others wins. I said. Yeah okay that could work. What about protecting it? Barriers only if our body interposed with an attack? He asked narrowing down the rules. Yeah. Also UV only for M attacks. In case out full body just not the rag. Also no heavy magnetic attacks for now. I'm still not comfortable deflecting or capturing high newton objects. Oh also no plasma flames. Yeah I saw you practicing that two nights ago. I told him. 
Yeah, that's fair. I can barely control the plasma right now away. He responded. We set up by looping rags into our belts and selecting appropriate M frequency and stood 40 feet apart. Ready? I said. Ready. He responded. We both counted down from five with our voices synced. Five, four, three, two, one, go. We both started running at each other, firing photons of UV energy at each other in an attempt to distract the other. Immediately I thought that we are too similar for this to work. I needed to do something he was not expecting. I decided to speed myself up, by pulling myself with my magnetic availability. Ironically he did the exact same thing at almost the same time. This in turn caused us to crash bodily into each other as we didn't really handle the apric speed very well. Ow. Fuck that hurt I said out loud in a haze of pain. Yeah. Agreed Tim said. Something unexpected right? I asked. Yup he said. Well I think I'm done. I was already covered in bruises before. Now I have become the Bruce. I told him. Yeah. Same. He said. We packed up our camp, and began to head home. During the trip back, I finally decided to call Jake to let him know I have recovered enough to help look into the abandoned kids. Calling the number hi is this Jake? This is Evelyn I said. Evelyn good to hear from you. How is your recovery going? He asked. I'm just about recovered I said, not wanting to indicate that I was already fully healed by the Tim and I started training. Wow all to da tough that was a massive knife with half of it serrated, and the docs even informed me you needed several units of blood after the accident, he stated, he was probing for sure, seeing what I was willing to talk about or let slip, I think, so about the abandoned kids you want me to help, I asked, yep, so we can meet in person sometime over the next day or two and go over the exact details but they have had an uptick in their burglary. They are also targeting more expensive areas as which is going to create even more pressure for more decisive action, he stated. To add to this, we have a new gang that has appeared consisting of mostly altered which is something we really don't need right now, he continued. Look I can handle kids I think but didn't say. Gangs on the other hand. I know that's bad and if they're all altered that just compounds things. I don't have any combat training, or any of the skills needed for that kind of work. Hell you would be better finding a few altered marines and training them for anti-gang tasks. I said. Yeah we are actually looking into that and of some promising leads. I am talking to a former marine and well I can go into the details later. He said. How about this? Look into the kids first. Then we can maybe talk about the gang stuff after. He asked. Sure. But I still don't get you are so interested in me. I said. Good thank you. Do you have a safe place we can talk? Most of what I'm working on here is I'm not strictly above board. He asked. Dot fine we can use my place. How about this Thursday afternoon say to? I said. Sure I'm on shift but I'll look into switching. Least I can do if you're willing to help. He said. K will send you my credentials in a bit. By the way if you don't already I recommend you use Signal app for our chats from now on. I told him. K? I'll look into it. I'm not even sure what signal is, he grumbled. After the call ended, I'm guessing you will want me to be hanging out that day right? Tim asked. Yup, but I would rather not have him even meet you. I told Tim. Wow you being paranoid this time, when did that happen? He asked in mock shock. When he asked if I could help out with gang shit, I told him. After three days of rest I was finally healed back up and ready for the meeting. This healing thing was great. Well except the amount of food I seem to need now. My grocery bill was getting really nasty. James showed up that afternoon and as it turned out with another individual, you know it's polite to inform the host when you are bringing a guest right? I told James. Continuing on I greeted the new stranger, who was clearly a former marine that I knew. Robert? I asked and looked between them for an explanation. Holy shit Evelyn. Is that you? I barely recognize you. Robert said with a giant grin. Um yeah, I can go over that later, let's get inside and talk. I told the pair. Walking then through my garage they both eyes the heavy gun safe with a bit of a surprise. Oh this was going to be fun. James first I apologize for not letting you know I was bringing Robert. Second I was unaware you two knew each other. So I'm um, Evelyn and I got back a few years. She was one of the integrations team. This about what two years ago I think? Robert asked. Yup, 
left because a new opportunity came up that aligned more with what I liked to do. Damn I miss that group though. I said, by the way no do you know James? I asked Robert. I didn't or don't really. Friend of a friend and was told he needed some assistance with gang related stuff, as a consultant. Robert told me. Oh really? Oh James. I get it you are trying to do the right thing. But this is getting complex. I told him. Again I am sorry. Truly. I am just at wit's end with this fuckers. They need to be stopped. Fuck if I knew how I would. Instead I was introduced to some people who maybe could do something. Fuck if all you can do is teach me about all to dial take it. James said heatedly. I signed. It seemed clear to me anyway that somehow this man was involved with the gang already. James. You are going to need to tell you's the whole truth. There is more here based on that outburst. I said kindly. A pause then fuck. You're right there is more and fuck I should have figured you'd notice something. James said. I have a brother-in-law. A real nasty please if work. That is altered. He's one of the gang leaders. What's worse is he has a kid that was also altered and has managed to abduct him into the gang as well. It makes me sick even thinking about it. I need to rescue that kid as he's all I have left of my sister who died to gang violence last year. James said with wet eyes and ears flowing down his cheeks. Fuck. I'm sorry to hear that. I told James. That's fucking rough. I'm sorry. Robert said at nearly the same time. Look as much as I want to get my nephew to safety. These other kids are more in our reach. And it keeps them away from this new gang. James stated with determination. That part I can agree on at least. I told James. Agreed said Robert. So Robert switching topics for just a moment. Are you altered as well? I asked him. Fuck I remember you being smart but you always told he you had a hard time reading people. Not anymore it seems. Yes I am altered Robert responded. So am I can move really really fast. Although I am still unsure I know what my max speed. I'm guessing go do my new speed as well it allows me to heal faster and recover faster. Robert continued. Oh cool you can heal faster. How long? I asked. A few seconds to a few minutes from the injury. He stated. Oh wow. Not like mine and Tim's then, we still take days to heal. I said. Processed what I said. Damn it you suck at this eve Tim said from upstairs. Oh right you have a twin. I think I interviewed him once. Okay, he is ripped to is that from being altered? Robert said. James just give me a little raised eyebrow and a look. Yes. It's from being altered. All we did to get these boats was sit around in our office chairs. I told Robert, just to dig at him a little as he was not into lifting. Wait seriously. That's not fair. Robert said. Oh also this is Tim my twin brother. I formally introduced Tim to the other two. So what can you tell us about these abandoned kids? Are they all altered? Tim asked. Yes at least from what the department can tell. The problem is not really the kid however but an older individual that seems to be their leader. James said. Oh also at least before she became altered she was a real handful then. We tried to help find homes for the kids before but she really didn't trust us. James continued. She seems to respond better to some women as least before she became altered. Yug. So what I'd like you to do is try and get close enough to the kids to tell them that some adults are trying to help them. The women on the other hand we are concerned with. She could get nasty before but now we have no idea what she can do. James continued. All right. This actually seems much more reasonable. If it's just talking that we need to do. I said. Then realized something I'm going to have to be on my own aren't I? Yeah. Hopefully we can find a time where that woman is not around and you can aprick the group of kids separately. James replied. Looking at Tim what's your opinion on this? I'm kind of for it. I said. Yeah this seems more reasonable. But where are you thinking of putting these kids? Tim directed towards James. Um. I wish I had better news there but all I have been able to find is a warehouse. I'm hoping that once we had something out together and working we could approach the state governor for assistance. James said. Really? I mean your heart's in the right place but really? I said in exacerbation. I'm looking into other non-profit options as well but. Well I have no idea what I'm doing. But I know I want to help. James said. All right. Okay. How many kids and did you already look into beds, cloths, food, 
I asked. I have put together what funds I could from my own personal savings and donations from a few others mostly EMTs and fire department. James relied. Fuck I doubt that will be enough. Fuck a charity organization would be much better for handling this I have no idea what I'm doing either. I said, let's spend a few days and figure out what we might need. I'll cover what I can. You guy I'm not going to have any savings after this, am I? I continued. I managed to scout out the kids just once but what I saw immediately told me I was doing the right thing. From a distance I could see maybe 10 kids, almost all girls with some younger boys. They didn't seem too malnourished from a distance but their cloths had certainly seen better days and didn't fit well. Also from what I could tell all of them had some change in their appearance that would easily mark them as altered, when talking with James. Yeah so let's say pick up 12 beds and mattresses. Oh and a bunch of those shoji screen room dividers, and colorful rugs. Yes, mom, he said. Oh also do a Costco run for snacks, and other stuff a bunch of kids might need. I said can do. Um what about costs? James continued. Right. So I guess take my card for now. He he luckily it still says Henry on it. I said then. I'm also setting up a new account to handle just this stuff but that won't be fully ready for a few more days. Tim said I'll do the cost go run. I need to pick up stuff for us anyway. Rob you willing to help out with this at all? I asked. Sure I can at least be an extra set of hands for now Rob replied. Oh last thing go to the Goodwill and raid all the cloths you can find that might fit between 8 and 16. Most looked like they have been in the same set for weeks. I said. 1. Chapter 10. Playing Guardian. I approached the rundown building where I knew the kids had been living. In my arms I carried a case of bottled water and on top of that a few boxes of Costco cookies. Hey I was a child once and if I was going to get bribed into doing something then cookies were a good option. The location was an old abandoned run down warehouse and yes I noticed the irony of what I was asking them. After entering the warehouse I could see a few of the kids scattered around looking nervous. I found a clear spot set down the water and cookies and calmly waited. During this time I was using my abilities to scan for heat sources, luckily Tim and I discovered that just like with magnetic sight we didn't need to look around to see. As I scanned I also grabbed a cookie and started eating. Fuck they were good, large and soft. One of the older girls our oldest sister doesn't like strangers. That's understandable the world can be a nasty place. I said, then continued but I'm hoping to make a bit of a peace offering. Fresh cookies anyone? That got the younger kids attention for sure. I also finally noticed movement in both IR and enhanced visual the form of a person over 20 feet in the air moving in the rafters. Ah so that's where this older sister is be hiding. My name is Eve, would anyone want to introduce themselves? I asked. There was a brief pause before two of the young kids spoke up. I'm Ruby. I'm Rose. Two standing next to each other said. Did they both have fox ears? Oh my god that's adorable. A more mature voice spoke out from the shadows in a stern voice Ruby, Rose we talk about strangers. Wow she was good at throwing her voice, if I had not already found her I would not have known where that came from. She was also continuing to move silently, she seems nice one said then the other picked up and she has cookies. Yep. Completing each other's sentences definitely sisters and the most likely twins. After a pause, okay. Everyone is allowed to have one cookie. Eve please back up a few feet and then stay seat. We can use this as a bit of a trust exercise. Doing what I was asked I was thinking to myself this is actually a positive development. I was a bit worried that this woman would attack me outright. After a moment of getting myself situated the two girls Ruby and Rose both approached arm in arm, and tail in tail. Oh my god they were adorable. Both little fox girls, one with ruby colored hair and fur and the other with rose colored. In ones and twos each came up and grabbed a cookie and a water. I could soon hear happy chewing from the quiet warehouse. So is everyone altered? I asked. Yup and they all know the basics of about to defend themselves, so don't try anything. I'll also add you will be contending with myself if you try anything. This mysterious older sister said. Okay understand and by the way you are in good company, I said looking right at her in the rafters. The woman I could see went stiff for a brief moment as my little maneuver shocked her. HMMMF. Altered as well I see, 
I should have expected that, she told, then she dropped the full height of the rafters to the floor landing in a crouch. The woman standing in front of me was about maybe 5 feet 3 inches or 5 feet 4 inches with a lean build. She was wearing a black crop top with a ragged looking military jacket. I could also see a miniskirt with long pale legs with combat boots with just a bit of heel. She had big hips and small breasts, with both hair and what I realized was fur of a dark red and purple mix. She had a fox's tail but bunny ears instead of fox's ears. How did that happen? Her eyes were deep red with streaks of violet and vertical slit purples like a fox's or cat's eye. Thinking about it I was unsure what the difference between a fox's eye and cat's eye was. I really hoped her version was not nearly as good as mine was. As I could feel a blush coming on from the immediate attraction. With more confidence than a I felt I introduced myself with a small smile. Hi I'm Eve. Hi. I'm Riku she said. While it would have been subtle to most I could see the pink and red explode in her cheeks. Wow I didn't consider how much information I could now see about a person based on coloration changes like a blush. After a momentary pause from both of us. So Eve, you seem to be interested in our little family. Given that you didn't just barge in here and try to take charge or snatch anyone I think we can talk. What do you want from us? Riku asked. Good she seemed to at least be open to talking that will help. So myself a few other altered and an off-duty cop are putting together a safe space for altered kids. I told her but made sure to project my voice loud enough for all the kids to hear as well. She reacted to the word cop however with a quietus. After a moment, okay a noble cause if I have ever heard one. Why? She asked. Why not it's the right thing to do. I'm in a position to provide some help and stability and I'm doing so. I said. Then why us? She asked. Ah. Um apparently your group has been stealing from different places and well now that you seem to be targeting richer areas people are taking notice. That's not to say why I am helping. I only heard about your situation just over two weeks ago. I told her, then quickly added the last part to try and convince this woman that I am not just some stodge for some rich asshole. Go on. She said. Crap I was losing her interest. Crap. Look I'm honestly just trying to help out, the James was the one that told me about the robberies, I told her with just a little worry in my voice, she just continued to stare at me with one of her eyebrows raised, look, in my case this has more to do with how the general population looks at altered, yes there are some prejudice fuckheads but most people are not really truly aware of what kind of people altered are, they just believe what the news, TV, and internet tell them. I told her. Continuing I am just worried about the community at large and want to make sure people are safe and happy. Is it ambitious and naive? Yes but that's all I got. I finished. With a long sigh the woman standing in front of me and took a moment to think. Okay. I think I know what you are getting at and can even appreciate it. What are you proposing? Mind you I have yet to make up my mind if I want to support you or not. She said. Okay that was too close. Thank you for keeping an open mind. We put together a temporary place. We have bed, food, cloths, and medicine for everyone here. I am just trying to provide an alternative to theft that is all. I said. Okay. Maybe but I would like to take a look at this place first before I agree to anything. Riku said. Understandable. Do you want to go now? It is a few miles away. I told her. Dot can you give me a moment with my family? She asked. Sure. I'll be just outside. I told her. Stepping outside I found a spot to just think and watch the sunset. How was I in this mess? I was a software engineer not a civil rights leader. The only thing I felt I had to offer in this particular case was my brand of strong moral compass which I honestly hoped was pointing in the right direction. Several minutes passed before Riku exited the old warehouse. With a cookie in hand no less. Well that was a good sign. I'm kind of surprised you ate one. What if I had poisoned them or something? I asked her with a small smile. I thought about that but saw you ate one first. Also I could not smell off about them even when I was up in the rafters. Last you do seem like an honest person. I'm less sure about your described company but if you're leading them then I'm willing to take a chance. Riku said, right. But I'm altered and I could have been immune to whatever was in them. 
I said looking at her with a raised eyebrow. With more confidence than I knew she was feeling they are fine, I would have known, Riku said. She continued to enjoy the cookie and was clearly thinking and gauging my reactions and overall body language. I left myself open to read. It was starting to get dark before she said sure let's go check out your little camp I guess. Not five seconds later her bunny ears perked up and was clearly listening to something. Fuck. I think one of the gangs are coming. Fuck fuck fuck. She said and rushed inside. I looked around for a moment to try and spot what tipped her off but I could not see or hear anything. How good was her hearing? I was just about to follow her inside only for her to walk back out wearing some crazy looking armor that seemed to be a mix of bone and metal almost. She was also holding a hammer that seemed way too large for her. The entire thing reminded me of something organic and it looked very tough. I told the kids to hunker down and ready themselves to run if need be. You know how to fight? Riku asked. Um a little, why what's about to happen? I asked in a bit of a panic. K well get yourself ready, it fit is the altered gang that just banded together this is going to get nasty. She told me. Fuck me, I'll try and help but I'm a software engineer. I told her while quickly looking around for something large, metal, and heavy. I could now hear the sound of deep bass, and a very loud engine. Well at least it will be obvious who the bad guys are I thought to myself. Do you not have any armor? She asked, taking a quick look at me. Yes. Well no. Well fuck it's complicated. I told her. In a blur she reached over to my chest and some of the armor around her turned to liquid scoo and formed up around me. It was hardly perfect but it did from a helmet cap and a thin layer around my torso to protect my most vital organs. It won't fully stop bullets but it should keep them from getting too deep. Try not to get hit, she told me. Um okay. Do you want me to cover the door with something heavy? I asked. She looked at me and just said sure. I don't think she knew what I was about to do. I focused on the metal dumpster that was on the side of the building. It was rusted but it was thick and heavy and would work well for a shield. Using my magnetic abilities I picked it up and placed it about three feet in front of the door in an attempt to provide some cover. Ha. Huh. Fuck me that works. How did you do that? She asked. Um I'll tell you later for now it looks like they are here. Also try not to get in my line of fire and I will also try to minimize the back scatter if I can. Okay I have no idea of fully half of what you just said. But will do she replied. Driving up to the rundown warehouse appeared to be three of the most gaudy looking pimp mobile I had ever seen outside of some satire. In total I counted seven or eight people. Fuck. Yep expect at least some if not all to be altered. I've been a thorn in their side for the past few weeks now. Riku whispered to me. Great. Oh fuck let me send a text I do have some backup but they will be a few minutes. I said frantically getting my phone out. My text help, gang attack. Kids in danger. I sent to Tim then I threw my phone into the warehouse to keep it from getting damaged. I loved being able to gently grab it in midair. Okay hopefully we will have some help in a few minutes. I said with some concern. Hopefully, she asked. By this point the gang members had exited their vehicles and lined up. They tried to make themselves look as big and tough as possible. They were also all armed with pistons and submachine guns from what I could tell. Very little or no body armor on the entire lot. Ah little reaper you have come out to play a large man with what appeared to be think gray skin yelled out. I figured he was the leader. I wonder why his skin was gray. You have exactly one warning. Leave or die Riku said in her most threatening and authoritative voice. Um Riku. Shouldn't we be trying to de-escalation? I asked in a whisper. Fuck you bitch. The gang leader yelled and pulled out his gun. Fuck. I did the only thing I could think of. I magnetized all the chambers in the open position with as much strength as I could muster. As it turns out that was a lot of force. All the guns clicked to an option position and were pulled to the next closest metal object at the same time. Mostly to the cars and many of them had metal chains too that got tangled up. Well that was an interesting tactic I thought to myself. Riku didn't even pay attention to the guns she just charged the leader and struck him in the chest with her big fuck you hammer. I could see and hear the hammer sink at least three inches into the guy's chest as he went limp. 
Two of the gang members quickly hulked out was the best way I could describe it. While the forms were different one just a larger person and the other kind of like a lizard man, both grew at least three extra feet and put on a lot of muscle from what I could tell. Another one went into a blur of motion, one just disappeared from normal sight but I could still see them in IR. One started throwing fireballs at Riku and everyone was going crazy. It was going to be a messy bloodbath. Fuck. 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 I was whispering to myself. I could see Riku moving over to a third target already. I took aim at the invisible asshole seeing him as a real threat in a battle like this. I hit him with an IR blast that would melt steel. I could feel the heat reflect back at me but I blocked almost all of it. Several gang members immediately caught fire. Oh fuck way too much I shouted. Riku looked around in a bit of a panic after the thermal wave dissipated not seeing any new threats though she quickly went back to her fight with the two Hulk monsters. Based on what her and I had already done we were left with six targets in total. Three were targeting Riku and two were just freaking out trying to figure out why they were burning. The one that was throwing fireballs seemed unaffected by my IR blast. Right heat energy he might be naturally immune. Let's test if that is just high R or all photons. See how much Riku was getting involved I changed my own tactic. Wrapping a barrier around myself for all of the M spectrum I focused my vision to a millimeter outside of my body. It was almost no change but it felt like I was trying to walk while looking through a pair of binoculars. Looking down all that was visible of me was a black void. I also wrapped a similar shield of magnetism around myself. It that fire was well real fire it should now pose a minimal threat. Knowing this was a really bad idea I started to approach the guy throwing fireballs. While doing so I could for a moment see the speedster patting out the fire on one of his mates. With a hair thin thread of microwave beam I cut him in half at the torso. Just then I could feel a wave of very hot air hit my chest. It felt standing too close to a campfire but it really didn't deter me. The guy throwing fireballs was panicking. He just saw one of his friends get cut in half by a person-shaped hole. The fireball he has just hit that same creature with was barely impacted. I could see the fear the terror in his eyes when looking at me. No not at me but looking at what I had become. Another moment passed and I felt a sharp stab of pain enter my left side. Fuck it hurt. Turning my attention I could see the guy throwing ice javelins switched to target me. Before he could get his next shot off I fired out a blast of white light just bright enough to daze him. I hoped. His next attack went wide and struck an old building just across the street from us. As he was recovering I approached him by a few steps then surrounded the two of us in a box of void. I let down all by M barriers except for the one for Gamma. Then for added effect I made my skin glow a pale white ghostly light. What in the ever living fuck are you? He screamed. Without response I held out my hand. Again for added effect but as for who I was no longer sure. I hit him with the heaviest blast of gamma ray particulars I could control. I didn't know what to expect but not quite what happened next. His entire body went rigged as the excited beam of photons struck his chest then he began burn from the beam point outward. Dropping the black void around myself and the burning gang member I looked at the fireball thrower and told him run. The last living gang member ran. 1. Chapter 11, Consequences, Riku's Perspective. These giant fuckers are tough stop. Hammer time. Start. Slicey time. I quickly changed the hammer to my scythe and took the arm of off one. The other Hulk lizard man took a few steps back after seeing his ally on the ground holding the stump of his arm. I could also feel that black void of a person Apaches the dick throwing icicles. I was purity sure it was Eve but I couldn't see past the darkness. Once the void of a person was within about 12 feet of the icicle thrower a void like box went up around the two of them. What the fuck am I dealing with here? I said to myself while circling my last remaining target. I studently heard the shout of a terrified man's voice from the void box what in the ever living fuck are you? Then the box clasped a moment later to reveal Eve. A burning corpse and a burst of the energy that I immediately started to absorb. Grinning at the Hulk lizard I booped him in the nose with my scythe and dumped a bolt of electricity into his brain. I then heard Eve telling the man throwing fireballs in the coldest void imaginable to run. Eve's perspective. I fell to my hands and knees and threw up. 
I could feel hot tears tracing down my cheeks. What the fuck did I just do? I just killed again. Eve you okay? I could hear Riku ask but it sounded miles away. No I said in response, and moved back into a kneeling position. Riku to my face in her hands and looked me in the eyes. You fought. You killed to defend others. Not don't let what you had to do worry you. We gave them their choice. Yes. But did I have to cut that guy in half? Dot. Or what about the core that is currently smoldering right over there? I cried out. I felt a painful slap on my cheek then Riku's hands grabbed my face again. Cry for the dead later. We have others to protect. She then kissed me on the forehead before running back inside the warehouse. She was right. I got up and followed. I found my phone right where I threw it only a moment later and looked at the time. It had not even been five minutes from when I had sent the text message to Tim. Did the fight really take so little time? What would it have been like if I had not been there? My initial blast took out several of the attackers. By accident. I felt the need to vomit again but did my best to suppress it. I sent another text to Tim have kids need a vark now. I found Riku a minute later checking over the kids to unsure no one was injured. So I contacted my brother and he and a friend should be here in a few minutes with vans to pick the kids up. Are you going to be okay with this? I asked. After a minute you and me will meet them first. I trust you I think but I don't trust them yet. She said. She then took a step closer to me and quickly whispered into my ear. If any of these kids are hurt because of you or your friends there will be hell. You understand me? She asked. Yeah. I said. It took a few more minutes for the vans to get in and I immediately noticed Tim was driving one and James was driving the other. Where's Rob? I asked. Back at the base just acting as lookout. Tim said. Okay let me grab Rick then. She wants to meet you first before letting you take the kids anyway. I told them. Um I think she already is Tim indicated behind me to the top of the roof. Normally she would be much harder to see but I quickly switch my vision over and it became obvious. I really need to do better with maintaining that ability at all times. It could be distracting if I let my mind wander but it made any form of stealth I could think almost useless against me. Yep that's her. She likes to be ominous I told the boys. Riku quickly jumped down from the top of the roof and approached our small group. Damn that was something like 30 feet. What was her max height? Riku this is Tim my brother and James the off duty cop I told her. Got it, so don't have too much time to go over some a few things but. You fuck with this kids at all you will find out what I am going to do to you. Got it? Riku asked. Yes mom James said. Got it Tim said. Riku took a moment more to look over them then indicated to me to follow her. How much does your abilities does Tim seem to share? She asked. All of them I told her. She broke her stride for just a fraction of a second before catching herself. I almost missed it myself. After we were inside the warehouse but before we got to the kids she stopped and looked at me. You said you don't really fight but from what I just saw 10 minutes ago you outclassed everyone in that fight including me. She told me with a bit of apprehension. I say this too as someone who has had some combat training. Unless I caught you unawares I don't think I could win against you in a fight. She grimized. Okay? So where is this going? I asked. I'm not sure it's going anywhere other than if something happens to me then you have to be the one to protect these kinds. She told me. Thanks I do think I understand. This is more to do with trust than anything else. I told her. A deep sigh I guess it is. Come on let's grab the kids. We managed to load all the kids in both vans, with Tim and Riku in one van and James and I in the other. The drive back was uneventful. However some of the younger kids did seem to be nervous. Eventually we got everyone in, assigned beds which they were all astounded by. Although we did have to rearrange several beds and screens so let some of the younger kids sleep together. Seeing Ruby and Rose in particular made my heart melt. We managed to have everyone get shows and at least get a change of cloths to sleep in. There was lots of other stuff that still needed to be done but this was a major upgrade for them. I eventually found Riku sitting on one of the couches in the living room's area. She clearly had an ear out for the kids but I also noticed her a lot more relaxed as well. Fuck. When did anyone show her or some of these kids any kindness? The change in expression alone made me want to weep for what they all had lost. You okay? 
you seem a little different? I asked Riku. Looking at me she smiled and it felt more real than any other time in the past few hours I had known her. Yeah, more relaxed. Your little group is actually trying to help. What's more is you are not imposing anything on us. You genuinely want to help. She told me. I chuckled oh we will get to rules, but I doubted you or the kids will have any problems with them. My number one priority here is to get them, and other like them safe. You're not wrong about rules. They need some level of guidance at least. Honestly I am feeling better and better about this. She told me. That's good to hear, by the way if you would like to get some sleep. I'm not sleeping tonight. If I did the ghosts I made this evening will come to haunt me. I told Riku. Riku launched herself at me and grabbed my face. Don't blame yourself. You did what you felt you had to do at the time. Don't let hindsight blind your judgment or your memories. We encountered threats this evening and we took care of them. They had been warned, they attacked us. It was their choice to do what they did. She told me with the vehemence someone who knew they did the right thing. After a moment's pause I looked her right in the eyes and said just two words. Thank you. She smiled, kissed my forehead again, closed her eyes and cuddled up to her fox tail. The thing did look very nice and warm to cuddle. While I was able to convince her I could not convince myself. There were demons that I was going to have to live with for the rest of my life. I woke up the next morning and could feel a warm weight laying on my right side. Looking down in confusion I found a sleeping ruby cuddled next to me then found the cuddled rose next to Riku. Their little fox tails were sticking out of their blankets intertwined. I then noticed that Riku was away and smiling at me. She whispered to me the twins really like you. It's the main reason why I chose to trust you yesterday. They have amazing instincts even if they are a bit mischievous. These two see you as a sister if I had to guess. With a smile I whispered back sorry for falling asleep, I meant to keep a lookout all night. Also I could be their mother, I'm old enough for that. Riku gave me a quizzical look and said hush or I could see you having kids at 14 or 16. No I'm serious serious, I'm a lot older than I currently look. I'm 35. I told her, wait are you serious? And you look like that? That no fucking fair. She said with a smile. Yep. In fact I looked way older and real more androgynous before becoming altered. I told her. What does that mean? She asked. However I could see a small expression change in her eyes. Well first off I am or maybe still am trans female. Although I am starting to question that now. I started my period three days ago. That was well unexpected I told her. Wow I never expected to meet another. Riku said with a hint of excitement. What? Don't tell me. You too? I asked. Yep, it's a long story that I am not super comfortable going into but with the most recent changes thanks to Bring Altered I am now 100% who I was supposed to me. She told me. It was about this time that I was getting a call from Tim, answering what's up? Have you seen the news yet? We need to go over what happened last night. There's problems. Tim said. Wait what's going on? I asked Tim. I'm sending you a link. I'm also leaving my place now and will be there in about 30 to 45 minutes. Tim said in a hurry then hung up. Okay what the foo fudge was that all about you think? I whispered to Riku. She just looked at me and gave me a confused shrug. I got the link Tim was referring to and immediately opened it. It was a local news report from CNN. I started reading then felt my blood go cold after three sentences in. It was about the Ang attack last night. As I continued it only got worse. A lot worse. Riku could see the panic and guilt on my face and became concerned. What happened? She asked. After a moment more I finally responded. The news just broke about the altered gang fight you and I had been a part of. The FBI is now getting involved due to what they see as a potential threat to national security. Oh it keeps getting worse. The Department of Energy is also involved. I told her. Okay I know the FBI and you're right that's bad. But the Department of Energy? Who are they and why do you seem so worried? She asked. I could feel myself hyperventilating. I knew of only one reason why the dough would get involved and it was by far the worst possible outcomes for Altered. Eve, you need to take deep breaths and tell me what's going on. Riku told me. 
Riku I fucked up. I fucked up really really badly. The only reason why the Department of Energy every get involved in anything remotely like this is because they think there are nuclear weapons or radioactive materials involved. This doesn't just make Altered look dangerous. This makes Altered look like a global threat to all humanity. In my attempt to try and protect Altered I may have just inadvertently do us all. I told her. 1. Chapter 12 fear. Tim eventually arrived maybe an hour later, luckily with a bunch of different donuts. This was a very good thing as it lifted both my mood a bit and all the kids love more sweets. Tim and I then began to discuss what exactly happened. So I hit one of the gang members with a blast of ultra high frequency gamma. It turned the fucker into a smoldering charcoal briquettes. I said, feeling my mouth go dry as I remembered the previous night. Okay I'm less sure on why you choose an attack that produced ionizing radiation but it happened. What do we think caused the dough to become involved? I have not had time yet to research that part. Tim said. So that took a little digging but I think I understand what's going on. I started. Due to the auger effect which is a process by which a photon collides with an electric it has a chance to produce a beta particles. With this process being spontaneous in nature, in effect the body is still radioactive because of this bouncing around. I told Tim. Fuck us that's really really bad. Any idea how long that corpse will take to cool down? Tim asked. No but what I did find indicated that was basically a scale of input power into the newly created iron. Photons and electrons are basically continuing to bounce around. I told him. Yep. This really bad. Tim said with real fear. Sorry newcomer here in regards to radiation. I don't really get it. Riku stated. I made that guy's corpse radioactive. It's now of charcoal briquettes of cancer waiting to happen. I told her, what do we do, or well what do I do? If the US government treats or altered like potential nuclear weapons well. I honestly don't think I could live with that. I said, as tears started to flow down my cheeks. I was also hyperventilating and beginning to panic. I could turn myself in. Explain to feds what happened. I said with panic and fear evident. I then felt two small sets of arms wrap about my waist on either side of me. You can't go. Rose on my left said, you bring us sweets. Ruby said in my right, you two are just adorable. I said with the biggest smile. You know what? I asked. Let's go find where Tim hid the donuts. As I crouched down and picked up the twin sisters, who both yelled in delight. I took a moment to adjust them on my hips and noticed how right and natural this felt carrying these two girl. Even if they were a little on the big side for this, I looked at Tim and said we'll pick this up in a little bit. Agreed said Tim with a small sigh then smiled at the sight. Thank you too. Are you able to read minds or was I that obviously in need of a distraction? I asked the two kids. In my head I hear you just looked like you needed a hug. But instead of one voice I could hear both of them at the same time. Okay, in stereo no less, to the junk food, I said to the two of them. I must have fallen asleep again for a few hours because I found myself on the couch again now with both twins one on each side of me snuggled up. Just like a cat falling asleep on you I knew it was illegal to move them. But I also knew I had some very important subjects to discuss. Very carefully I extricated myself from between the two girls. I then took a moment just to admire the sheer adorableness of the two then headed off. Finding Tim didn't take too long and luckily Robert and James were both there as well. I had not seen Riku but could get a sense that she was close by keeping an eye on all the kids. Feeling better? Tim asked me. A bit. Any updates from the news? I asked. Nope. In fact while the FBI is currently investigating the news outlets are not longer talking about the Doe's involvement. They didn't rescind that the Doe was not involved however. Tim said. Okay so that just they hope everyone who noticed forgets and that the feds don't want to cause a panic if someone puts their involvement together. I said. Yeah. Our theory too. James chimed in. I'm still thinking turning myself in and explaining everything might be our best bet. I don't want the US government or well anyone to treat halted as potential weapons of mass destruction. I told the group. That I get. I'm unsure how that might play out though. Tim responded. I can also deliver our personal research to them. Well after we scrub everyone's names. I said. 
If we can prove that only a very very small set of the population is truly dangerous well then maybe we can de-escalate, I continued. I get the sentiment and the concern. But this seems like a rash action for the time being, Tim said. Robert and James both nodded in agreement. Okay. Let's at least do some prep in case things take a turn, ill-duplicated and scrub our research of everyone else's identity except my own, if things get really really bad. Well I can turn myself in by everyone else time, I said. I don't think martyrdom is going to be the best way to solve this but if preparing this helps you feel better well, you will not be turning yourself in until you talked with over with all of us, Tim said. Agreed I replied. I went to find Riku and after several hours of on and off searching I eventually found her just keeping an eye on the kids. Oddly I got the impression that she had been intentionally hiding from me for a while. Hey. So um why were you hiding from me? I asked. I wanted to make sure I still could. You and your brother both seem to be able to locate me without any problems so I wanted to put that to the test. She stated with a playful smile. Oh. Um I didn't think about that until just a few minutes ago, I was not using my other sites to look for you this time, I said a bit sheepishly. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, well we might need to turn this into a game at some point, what do you think? She asked. What altered hide and seek? Actually that sounds like a lot of fun if we involved all the kids as well. I said, okay, I'll see what I can prepare. She said as her grin became larger. So what's up? She asked. I wanted to talk about your abilities if you are open to the subject. Given that we already fought together once we should have a better understanding of each other's limitations for the future. I stated. You first. I mean I would like an explanation on how you can see me so well. And I am already well aware of that ability. Riku stated. Okay but you better give me something in return. We don't need to give away everything obviously but I think a degree of trust is in order. I told her. Agreed. She said. I gestured over to the couch and took a seat. Okay, so myself and Tim can both see a much wider range of the electromagnetic spectrum. I told her. What's the electromagnetic spectrum? Ruby, I think. The other was not round at the moment. Asked. Where did you come from? You are a sneaky little fox girl. I told her. Riku taught us, she said with a smile then hopped up into Riku's lap. Okay, so you know how you can see different colors like red, green, and blue? I asked. Yep, orange is my favorite color, she said. So each color is its own specific wavelength or frequency we call it, like think of waves on an ocean. Let's say you get one wave every 10 seconds, and let's give a color to that wave of blue. Do you follow so far? I asked. Yep, she replied. Then by this point the other twin which I now saw was Ruby crawled over the back of the sofa into my lap. Am I going to look back there and find two more of you? I said looking at the two of them. Nope they both said in unison. All right, then Ruby do you need me to start over? I asked. Nope you said once every 10 seconds a blue wave comes. She told me. Okay then. So let's say something changes and now the waves are coming every 15 seconds. This would cause the waves to change from blue to red. As to why at 10 seconds it's blue and 15 seconds it's red is another matter but I am getting off topic. I told them. Well frequency is the number of waves that come every second. Except that you can now imagine the waves coming every 250 per 1 second for blue and 150 waves every 1 second for red. I continued. Are you both following me so far? I asked the twins. After a moment of looking at each other they both responded yes at the same time. Why was this what it was like for people when Tim and I were younger and I was still going by Henry? Okay well now imaging every color in the rainbow has a different rate at which the waves come in, with blue being more waves per second and red being less waves per second. So yellow would be kind of in the middle. I told them. Okay so now what if there was a color that was more red than red? Well there turns out to be something like that can we call it infrared? People can't normally see it but we can feel it. Infrared is felt by your skin as heat. I told them. It was a bit of an oversimplification of course. The same also goes for blue. Well I should have said violet earlier. Waves that come more often than violet are called ultraviolet. I continued. Still following me? I asked them. Another pause. 
Then both of them nodded. So what one of my powers allows me to do is actually see what I call infrared and ultraviolet. They don't actually look like colors to me but instead people, objects and just stuff looks different in those colors. As I continued, so if you were hiding from me at night I could not see you in the dark. Your body does not produce anything from the red to the violet range. You only see those colors as a reflection from a light source like a flashlight or the sun. I really hope I was not going too fast with them on this there. A complexities here regarding absorption and refraction that I was unsure how to explain without looking it up again. Still understanding? I asked again. This time a longer pose and more hesitant note of understanding. Okay well what your bodies do produce is heat. If you have ever felt someone with a fever then you have felt the heat their body is producing. Heat is just the infrared wavelength. So let's go back to seeing someone at night. If it was completely pitch black I could not see you because you do not produce anything from red to violet light. You do however produce infrared light and my ability lets me see that. I told them. So even in the darkest basement or cave I can still see. As I finished the lecture. Does that make sense to the two of you? I asked. Another pause. Then yes I think so. Your ability allows you to see us because we make heat. They said in a back and forth manner. Yup that is correct. I responded. So how much of the spectrum can you and Tim see anyway? Rick who asked. Um. All of it from what I can tell and at a very very high detail. Well beyond normal human sight at 2020. I told her. So when you track me you are tracking my heat. She asked. Your heat an augmented view of the visible color range, ultraviolet, and even radio. I told her, I can tell you this, cell phones are noisy and very easy for me to see, the radio output goes through walls. I finished up. Okay hiding from you and Tim is going to be very hard, she said. It's even harder than you think, we don't need to see any of this with our eyes. I can even project my sight out to about three inches away from. How the hell that works, I have no idea. But hey I don't need a mirror anymore to see if something is on my face. Or look through a wall. But I will note that my perspective is from that point so looking through a piece of paper covering a painting is not really doable. I mean I can but it's like looking at a painting via a microscope then. I told her, okay. You were not kidding, I'm kind of jealous of that ability. It is a massive number of utilities. Riku said, all right Riku your turn. I told her, I think I will start by showing you something instead. She said with a smile as a liquid slowly flows up her arm and into her hand to form a cube, which she then hands me. Fascinated I take the cube and start to examine it. First probing it with all the passive methods I had I noticed it was completely solid but lighter than I expected. The material it was comprised of was several different things based on what my personal radio spectroscopy could tell me. Unfortunately other than getting several different returns I could not tell what each was. I did something similar but with magnetism and found some of the material in it was indeed ferromagnetic but not all. So clearly a composite of some sort. Switching over to a visual spectrum and generating a pure white like I zoomed in. The feeling was weird it was kind of like a microscope but much clearer to me and because I could make out everything at the same time I didn't really need to adjust the light. I needed to work with Tim and understand how our vision abilities worked they made very little sense in some way. Now it had been a the better part of a lifetime from my days in high school biology but I think I could recognize cells when I saw them. However just to compare I looked at my own hand and was shocked to see the level of complexity within what Riku had produced. Currently each cell was maybe four times larger than one of my cells. They also all took on the same shape and structure. Riku, what am I looking at this block seemed to be comprised of just cells. I asked. I call them my nanites. She said. Riku, I am seeing all sorts of weird stuff like I think I see nerve clusters inside of the cells, I'm not even sure how that's possible. I said, can I take a look at your hand? I asked Riku. Silently shuffling over she presents her arm to me I begin to focus in just like I did my hand a moment ago. I could see it the same cell that made up the block I was holding also made up her hand. They had a different appearance and were more flexible but taking my time I could identify all of the same structures. Taking a deep breath I then focused under her sink and into her muscles. 
I was able to provide a point of light in between the cells which was new. I didn't think I could do anything like that. Her muscle cells look very similar to her skin cell as well as the block. Any one of her cells could be repurposed for use in another part of the multicellular organism. It was both fascinating and terrifying. I focused in on a blood vessel and looked finally a bit of a difference. It was much much smaller and similar to what I could see in myself but I could see a few key areas that were not removed. Could her cells remove unused components in the cells to fit more specialized tasks? Looking at some bone I could see a much more similar structure to that of the block, just configured for a bone. Could she reinforce her bones in some way? Last I got to the brain and was shocked. I saw a super cells like in the block but they were only loosely fixed in place. I also didn't see the same level of neural cluster connections branching from cell to cell like I did in other areas. I focused on the spinal cord and noticed that it was not like mine at all. Hell even the backbone was more of a reinforced spinal cord than what I would describe as bone. Um Riku. Do you feel okay? I asked kindly. Yep, feel fine. Why? She asked with a bit of concern. I'm obviously no biologist but well your cells are completely different from any other cells I have encountered. Which I guess is just mine. I told her. Like I think I recognized other cells inside your larger cells. I mean I've heard of theories that the mitochondria was a captured cell. But your current cells seems to reduce their size to fix specially roles like capillaries and veins. But following some of those they don't go to the places I would have expected. Your entire body is well longer recognizable as human. I didn't even see your brain. Your spinal cord seemed thicker and way tougher than a normal person's though. I gently told her. But knew immediately this was too much. I. Too. I don't have a brain. But I'm me I know who I am I remember. Well life before I was whole said Riku. She was clearly in distress due to the news of her physical changes. I needed to shock her out of it even for just a moment. So I grabbed her and kissed her on the lips. 1. Chapter 13. Support. The kiss broke the spiral of thoughts just long enough for her to hear my voice. Riku. Rose. Ruby. And I all have you, okay? I told Riku while holding her against my chest. The twins went to work by pressing themselves against Riku's chest and forcing her arms to hug the two of them. Riku they both said in unison. Your mind. Rose started. Is still you Ruby finished? We hear you. We are here for you they both finished. All three went silent. I gently let go of Riku's head to allow her to hold the twins better. I also began to stroke her hair and after a few minutes she seemed to calm down just a little more. Seeing the kind of state she was in I pulled by hand away to give her and the twins some space. Her arm closest to me flashed out and pulled me into the embrace before I had a chance to even react. I wrapped my arms round everyone as best I could and let my noggin rest in the pile of heads and foxes. I felt myself pulled into somewhere else. It was the memories of Riku, Rose, and Ruby. I experienced excitement and want. No need. I witnessed burning hatred of discovery. I felt the ice-cold anger of planning. I saw the fires of revenge. I found relief of escape. I knew the bonds of sisterly love and family. I was most surprised when I witnessed my own face from the perspective of Riku. The hope and yearning she felt when the twins first met and accepted me. Finding another kindred spurt to fight to protect others. It was only flashes of memory and emotion I witnessed but it showed three lives of horror, torture, experimentation, then finally freedom and safety. I knew right then and there that if anyone hurt these three like that again then the people responsible would salt the earth with their radioactive ashes. I woke up several hours later saw. I found myself still kneeling next to the three, my arms still kind of around them as I had fallen asleep in that position. I also realized that shifted at some point and might have drooled in my sleep down Riku's back. Getting up I stretched and felt at least half my joints pop but I at least got the satisfaction of several vertebrae popping too. I also realized too that I dropped the block of material that Riku made that started this entire emotional journey. I grabbed some Tylenol to help with my stiff body then took the cube over to a tiny little workshop Tim and I had put together. I wanted to run some minor experiments, maybe get an idea of how this clump of cells worked. One thing I did notice was there was no M communication between the cells in the network. 
that would mean it required direct physical contact to communicate with, or maybe it was telepathy. I was unsure how Ruby and Rose communicated like that but it was not via any form of M signal. Tim and I had brought like half the tools and little makeshift gadgets we use as part of the testing process for the two of us. I quickly pulled some minor stuff apart. The problem that I was going to run into was how signal propagation between nerves actually happened. Communication between two neuron synaptic pathways is established by flow of mostly sodium, calcium and potassium ions from what I could look up. The problem I saw with that was these cells were external now to the body. Would cells on the larger host have to latch on and issue a command to the dormant cells of the cube? No this was not going to work without Rick's help at least initially. I decided not to push my luck and go get some proper sleep. Waking up the next morning I found yet again that Ruby was cuddled up on top of me. This was adorable but they each needed to start sleeping in their own beds. Eventually, I found Rick in the kitchen area which really just consisted of a few folding tables and chairs. Are you feeling okay? I'm sorry I caused you all that distress. I asked Rick who. She was sitting there drinking a cup of tea and pondered the question for a moment. I think so. Ruby and Rose showed their memories of me from before I was altered and well they match up, she said. That's good to hear, and BTW Ruby and Rose included me in one flashes of memory and emotions. I'm so sorry that happened to you all. I can't turn back time but I can protect all of you. I told her. She looked at me then through me for a moment, saw what she felt she needed to see and nodded. Always prioritize Ruby and Rose first. They are better than us. I saw small flashes of your memories as well. I could see the want and need to protect but I could also see a darker side you keep bottled up in case of emergency. While I don't mind, those two are going to need to learn privacy and boundaries. There will be a time where their adorableness will not protect them. I am an introvert and I like my solitude some days, I told her with a smile. I could like a partner at some point and until they reach at least 18 I would rather them not see anything. She said with a smile, after a few more minutes where I got some tea for myself, I wanted to start talking to her about her cells. Hey are you any good with engineering work by chance? I asked. Yup, got some training in electrical and mechanical engineering. She said, that's good to hear, Tim and I have massively heavy backgrounds in computer science and engineering as well as picked up quite a bit over the years. I told her, so I was thinking, if I could understand how your cells calling cells seems odd though. I was in the middle of saying, oh I call them nanites she told me. Okay nanites work I think, so I could like to study them for a few hours if you would still be willing to show me how things work. I told her, sure, might give me an opportunity to learn more about as well. She told me, let's head to our workshop nook. I have the cube you made yesterday still in there. I told her. She shrugged then followed. So how do you command them exactly? My guest right now says you need physical contact is that correct? I asked her. Yeah, watch I can go through this a few times. Ouch what there. The said out loud looking at the block in confusion. What's up you okay? I asked. Yay they stung for a moment before I could pull them in for never had that happened before, she said. Oh crap sorry that was likely me, I woke up in the middle of the night and got a little curious. Sorry I put a few drops of salt water on them to see if they would react. I told her, weird for never had that happened before, then again if never left a chunk of myself. Oh that's weird to say, a chunk of myself out overnight, she said. Okay let me try that again, even if it hurts I imagine it would pass, she continued. Attempting to absorb them once again she winced a little bit, then they merged with her hand then arm. Yeah. They feel a little stiff to be honest, she said, while massaging her wrist. And I should have checked it before you absorbed it. That might have told us something. I said, oh yeah good idea but a little late I think. She responded, hey how many can you make? We can set up several tests and check back every few days. I commented, a few dozen. How many are you thinking? She asked. Not sure maybe four, two for tomorrow one with salt and one without. The, the other two would be the same but a week out. I said. Set up only told a few minutes. I started to wonder how many different tests we could cook up. Maybe an hour later. Hey so I have been meaning to ask you how do you replenish your stores of nanites? 
I asked. Food mostly, though in an emergency I have used just raw organic matter before but that made me feel sick. She said. Okay that seems to indicate that contamination is a very real possibility. Even with how much I different your cells where I could guess at some of the parts. You're still human. Just a lot tougher I would expect. Oh have you ever felt sick with food before? I asked. Now that I think about it. Yeah once everyone had food poisoning. She said. Well you are what you eat and for you that is a bit more literal. Funny feelings should be something to keep an eye on for thought. I said. Speaking of funny dealings when you hit the guy with that gamma blast. I got a burst of energy once your void like barrier dropped. Riku said. Really that's interesting. Only after the void barrier dropped and not before? I asked. Yup she replied. Okay that's something we need to look into but I'm not comfortable with trying that right now. Besides even if you can absorb some of it other subatomic particles might be more dangerous to you. I told her. Oh right I completely forgot I was going to ask you how you control your nanites. I would like to make very close observations if possible. I said. Sure. I'll make a knife this time, she said and held out her hand until a single bladed dagger grew. It looks kind like it was made out of bone in some spots and metal, maybe iron in others? I commented more than asked. You're the one who told me it would built out of my body so it is likely bone or calcium. She replied. Okay let me take a look over this for a moment. As I started to scan with all my senses again. This time I could see a visible edge for the blade that was made of what I was still guessing was calcium and iron, but not the cells directly. I had to trace my way by by about a third of the blade to finally seek cell. Alright can you try to command the blade to dull its edge I want to see what is happening at the microscopic level. I asked. She took the knife in her hand not seconds later I saw a conveyor of minerals dull the edge. Yeah interesting. So the entire blade edge was on a conveyor where I'm guessing the material is reabsorbed. I said, can you change to a stick or pole next? I asked, she did so. Yup I could see the cells subsuming the mineral layer and depositing more minerals or hardened cell closer to that of fingernails. Okay last thing I'd like to try and observe. Can you use your pinky to interface with the object? I'm wondering if I can see the nerve synapse reach out in either direction. I said and she did so. This part shocked me a little bit more instead of just synapses reaching out the cell wall on both sides parted allowing a connect to be formed. From what I could then tell both supercells seal up but completely wrapped the synaptic connection my then informed her of what I had witnessed. Okay now what? You do have my very interested in trying new things out, Riku stated. Not sure, have you tried changing your shape before? As I asked she grew a few inches in height and I saw her breasts expand out. Something like that she asked with a wicked smile on her face. Oh that's not fair. I said. Feeling a blush run to my cheeks I immediately had an idea to try something new. I placed a M barrier that emitted a projection of what my cheeks looked like without blushing. Hey what was that you started to blush then it just disappeared? She asked. Oh interesting I was projecting an illusion. Wait what if I could have the M barrier reflect instead of absorb? I could feel a very subtle phantom shift in my cheeks. Um how your cheeks are glowing? She stated. Oops I still had the original projection. Also trying much outputs of light and stuff. So I dropped that. Oh that's better. Okay what are you doing? She asked again. I'm projecting an illusion from my M barrier. I also just discovered I don't need to absorb M I can also have the barriers reflect. Sure it's nowhere near as fun as your ability, but I can come up with a few ideas for this. I said. I felt her touch my face after a moment. It looks a D feels just like your skin, huh? She asked. The M barrier is nanometers away from my skin and it molds to my skin. I seem to be able to hold more dynamic barriers when very very close to my body. Oh let me change my skin color and you will notice what I mean. I said changing the color of my entire body this time I became a very very bright hot pink. Ha <laughs> ha holy shit that hurts to look at. He laughed. Damn I should have realized sooner I could have done this sooner. Oh uh, ooh, one more test. Got up and got close to a wall then used my M sense and reflective barrier to try to mimic my background. Oh wow holy shit you are hard to see, try moving around some, Riku said. I did. Nope much easier to see you now. 
but still a really cool trick to help you sneak against mundane people. Trying one last thing. I moved photon clone of myself the opposite direction making sure it looked more obvious. I took the opportunity to sneak around to just behind her I was about to grab her in the hug when she spun around and grabbed me instead. You're going to need to be quieter than that my little sneak, and your delicious smell. Riku said. Oh fuck this was a real turn on. 1. Chapter 14. Intimacy. Next. Announcement. CW. Nudes. Descriptions of sexual acts. I could feel Riku pull me in close almost lifting me off the floor. Her comment about my smell made me focus on hers. A slight mustiness, with a hint of floral scent. I in subtle warm tangy aroma. It was a bit overwhelming. My sense of smell was always very poor before being altered and this was the first time I really paid attention to it. I smiled and fell into the embrace and relaxed my forehead on her forehead. Her being able to change her own height was just unfair. MMM. You enjoying yourself? Riku asked. Yup I responded just a little too quickly. I should show you some pointers, after you are the one that can actually go invisible. She said. Maybe in a bit I'm comfortable. I told her. MMM same. She said. Dot I have no idea how much worse it must have been for you but it's been 100 miles per hour since I became altered. Some of that was certainly self-inflicted. It's fascinating I told her. Um, yeah. The week for sure. Taking care of scared kids. But they adapted quickly. In fact in some ways it became easier. Shoplifting and such that is. At first the gang scared me as they tried to make a power play in those areas that used to be more controlled by the cops. She said. Dot, but as it turned out I was able to vent some of my frustration. Anger. And revenge. I'm not proud of what I did but I don't regret it either. She continued. Well I hope I can help you avoid that entirely in the future. I said, after a minute or two of a pause. Hey I'll race you to the roof, the sunset is gorgeous. I told her playfully, you think you're faster than me? And well it will be entertaining for me to see you fumble up the side of the building. She said, I just smiled and over here wink, then said go. We both took off, however I was not going to be playing fair for once. I had spent a day placing reinforced pockets in my cloths and had slipped in chunks of steel to act as latch points for my magnetic abilities. It was far from perfect but in a pinch I could pull, push, and lift myself. Using this now I moved myself via these points, blasting ahead of Riku. She let out a choked confused expletive as I rocketed past. The warehouse we were renting was downright massive but it was cheap for the short time we figured we would be using it for. It is the heavy metal shelves for bulk storage set up in long wide rows for three quarters of the space. The area everyone was using as a temporary shelter was in one of the back corners. Riku and I were currently moving full speed to the front of the warehouse, where we would find the loading doors. I got there with seconds to spare. Opened one of the four large doors slid under it then closed it before Riku could use it again. I then just flew up to the roof and took a seat on the ledges. About four seconds later I heard one of the other doors start to be pulled up but then stopped. What was hard to see in our flight down the warehouse was I had specifically unlocked just one door from range. I could hear a curse and a laugh before the door I used was then opened. Riku found me just looking down at her with the biggest grin on my face. So I just wanted to see what this fumbling up the side of a building was all about. I told her while giggling, hey you cheated, as she used her claws and very powerful arms and legs to move up the side of the building. Oh yeah well what's that then with the claws? I can't do that. I told her in a mocking but playfully manner, okay for real I didn't think you could fly. How did you do that? She asked. Oh am I added in some steel points in some of my more practical cloths. I can then target and move. I told her. It's not the most comfortable process. However that would require much more study and better reinforcement. This was just a test. I finished. Rick then pulled me from behind into an embrace, making sure my head was resting on her chest. I could smell that sweet tangy aroma more strongly now. It must have been a mix of sweat and something else but I liked it. You keep surprising Eve. Your skills, your intelligence, your selflessness, your eagerness. It's infectious. I want to learn more. I want to push myself harder and to do greater things. She said. 
If only know you for what less than two days and I don't just feel I can trust you. I know I can trust you. She finished. I could feel her starting to play with my hair as we watched the sunset and I just drank her in. The sunset as promised was beautiful and quite relaxing to watch while we enjoyed each other's company. As it started to get dark, Riku asked so um if I misread this then I apologize. But you have a more private location where we could continue to enjoy each other's company on a more intimate level? My blush immediately covered not only my cheeks but it is spread just a little down my neck as well. Um. Well there's here on the roof. Um there are also some locked and empty office space we are not supposed to use. The little room where we set up that workshop and stored extra supplies. I started to list out. I immediately felt her lift me into a princess carry which I found as even more of a turn on. Workshop. Hide us from view. She commanded. So without thinking I did. I then realized the problem with this for others. Almost at the same time Riku gasped and asked. Why is it pitch black? I can't see now. Oh crap. Um I have to project my vision out by a few millimeter in front of my eyes to see. I chuckled. Can you do that to me? She asked. Um nope. I think it's more the nature of my altered abilities. Invisibility mean none of the photos hit you and reflect back for others to see. I informed her. Well this is very inconvenient. How do I see if I'm invisible? She said complaining but with a clearly sarcastic undertone. Wow it'll miss I want everything. I guess bending and twisting the laws of physics particularly optics as humanity understands them isn't good enough. I responded in kind. Thinking about it I might be able to sidestep again. I could project an image on my barriers. I've now only been doing this for 15 or 20 minutes so I had no doubt I could get creative. Um give me a moment I might actually have a solution. I told her. It took me a few minutes but I was able to first set my projected vision to a few millimeters in front of Riku's eyes. I then put another barrier in front of her eyes and rendered what I was seeing via my projection. It took quite a bit of mental effort to keep the invisibility barrier going as well as this new modification of my barrier but it worked. Um holy shit I can't see myself for you but I can see again. Is this what it was like for you? She asked. Yep. Less talking more sneaking. Hard to keep this up. I told her with a hint of effort. She then took a moment to step up onto the ledge of the roof and jump down to the ground. It was a giddy experience particularly when not being in control. Once landing I took a quick look around with my projected sight. Oh what the fuck was that? Did you just look around really really fast? All I saw was a blur. Is that how you see all the time with your abilities? She asked. Oops sorry. Didn't think about how that might look on your end. Also yes but not nearly as blurry I think. I told her and moved the projected vision back to its original spot. I really should spend some time investigating this way of sight. I mean Iku. As I was in the middle of talking I could feel her lips press onto mine. And my mind kind of short circuited for just a moment. Less talky more invisible, she said with a soft chuckle. I really liked that chuckle. Then I processed what she said. I guess in my distraction from the kiss I lost my concentration on maintaining the invisible pocket. Hey. Not my fault you kissed me, I said in mock outrage. Then I concentrated again and re-enveloped us. Um could you also get the door? Otherwise we'll need to set you down. And um I don't wanna, she asked. Yug. I can get the door I guess, I quietly said in a playful tone. We eventually made it inside and Riku snuck us past everyone. She was incredibly quiet. I think my own breathing was louder than all the noise she was making. We made it to the workshop where I let us in. We had a few hazard objects stored in there so we generally kept it locked. After getting in I dropped the invisibility and just for added measure I magnetically bound the door to the door frame for extra security. So now that we are alone what wear you thin? Again she kissed me in the middle of me speaking but held the kiss. I could feel the hunger and need within her. The intimacy she had been missing for so long wanted to come out. I responded in kind for the very same reason. She set me down on the ground feet first but instead backing away I felt her press into me and I returned in kind. We continued to kiss our tongue teasing each other's lips in a quick dart in and out. Breaking apart for just a moment what do we want to do? I quietly asked her. I want a comfortable nest. She said with a blush. Announcement. CW. 
sex, spoiler, luckily because we had overordered some bed supplies we had a few extra rolled up mattresses, bedding and such, so we spent the next few minutes moving some stuff around before we had a comfortable nest of pillows, blankets and two mattresses, once it was all set up I immediately fell into it with Riku following suit. We just spent the initial few minutes looking into each other's eyes as well as tracing with our hands. Her fox's tail came up between us when I touched a particularly sensitive spot and she blushed. Oh my little fluffy fox doesn't want me to see her blush, I quietly said teasingly. This time I moved a bit closer and nuzzled her tail with my face. It felt very warm, soft and smelled just like her but a bit stronger. Oh when you do that it feels different. I like it. As she closed her eyes, as I continued to play and explore she started to make an adorable purring noise then she gently grabbed one of my hands and moved it up to one of her bunny ears and I began to scratch. It was such an odd but adorable combination to have. Feels good. As she laid next to me making all sort of happy little noises, I could feel her entire body continuing to relax into a puddle of happy contentedness. Then something happened that startled me a little bit, she kind of melted a little bit which had me worried. Um Riku are you okay? I asked, and when I did she snapped out of it before quickly returning to normal. <laughs> Why'd you stop? That felt amazing. She whispered. Oh um. I paused for just a moment before continuing with a little embarrassment and a tiny bit of concern. You were starting to well. Melt it looked like. I told her. I what? She asked. Um you started to look like a bit of a melting candle. I said. Weird. I kind of has a feeling come over me of wanting to just be a puddle of happiness and contentment. She said. OMG. I love it. It's adorable. I told her. Wait you're not freaked out? She asked. I was worried for a moment but you snapped back out of it and seem perfectly fine. Also I am now wondering how flexible you are. I said with a very naughty grin. Her cheeks went bright pink with embarrassment but she then immediately pressed on top of me. I immediately felt her hands reach under my shirt and pushing it up my torso while exploring my curves. It felt amazing her warm soft hands caressing my curves moving up to my breasts. Her mouth was pressed against mine and our tongue danced between each other's mouths. Soft and firm we could feel each other's want and need. I wrapped my muscular legs around wide hips and felt her press and grind against me. I could feel myself getting so warm and wet. The smell and taste of her was intoxicating. Lifting my hands above my head we separated for just long enough to remove my shirt then free my breasts from my sports bra. Riku took a moment to just explore my exposed soft breasts and abs. She then lowered her mouth down to one of my nipples and started to play. It felt just like being caressed but better and more focused. Her tongue would occasionally circle the areola before gently licking the tip of my nipple. I could feel the sensation of electricity jolt through my body every time she hit just the right spot at just the right pressure, building a little more every time. Just as that feeling started to expand outward and intensify she stopped, only to begin on the other breast. She was teasing me and it only made me want more, as she continued to tease me I was exploring her body. Well the spots I could reach at the moment. She has incredibly soft skin and I could feel the play of muscles under that skin, lifting her own hoodie and began to mindlessly trace random patterns on her back with my nails. Closer to her spine she would let out a small shutter and noise so I began to slowly trace just like how she played with me. After a bit more teasing of my nipples and breasts she finally came up and pressed her mouth onto mine again. I went back to tracing up and down her sides. I would tease her by slowly pushing my fingers into the underside of her sports bra, or slowly trace waistline of the mini skirt. After just a moment of that she gave up and let me lift her hoodie and sports bra very slowly off of her. I could feel her eagerness and want for me to hurry up but I took my time. Finally I had my own chance to look at her body and it was amazing. At some point she stunk her breasts back down but this just made them fit her slender body all the better. Before I had a chance to taste her delicate pink nipples her mouth was over time and I could feel her tongue trying to enter my mouth. I let her enter and as soon as I did I felt her entire body press up against mine even more. I shifted my legs and eventually found the button and zipper of her skirt. 
Once undone I slowly pushed by my fingers then my hands down her hips bringing the skirt with them. She extricated her legs as quickly then before I had a chance to notice I felt her hands working at my pants. She then began to tease me by pulling my pants down a little then gently running her fingers under the band of my thong. It tickled that way only pleasure and anticipation could. As I closed my eyes and let out a soft whimper I could then feel her hair brush my stomach then her lips. The little kisses moved slowly, too slowly down my stomach to right at my panty line. I felt the gentle tug as my thong was slowly removed then a little chuckle and the light pressure and delicate trace of a finger. Someone liked to keep things very smooth down there, Riku said. I could only respond with ragged breathing and small whimpers. I didn't want her to stop. The delicate kisses started again right where they left off slowly moving lower before finally mercilessly I could feel her tongue every so gentle brush around my clit. The warm and electricity I could initially feel from my nipples built up so much faster than before. I could feel a tension building in my abdomen my back arching and breathing heavily. The tension finally snapped and I felt a wave of pleasure spread through every inch of my body. A tingling wave of relief and release. The moan that left my lips must have been much louder than I realized to a moment later I felt a very fluffy tail cover my mouth collapse. 1. 